Desert Hot Springs. Good evening to you all. And good day to you if you watch this tomorrow, and good morning to you if you watch in the morning. Whatever time you're watching, I love y'all. How are you all doing out there? Oh man, what a life. What a life, this is awesome. You get to come here, I, I don't know, this, this music just gives me chills. It's simple, it's royalty free. I, I, I found that if you play music that's copyrighted and that's owned by music labels and things like that, they got agreements with Facebook and with YouTube and they don't like you playing it. So I got stung a couple times when I first started doing this and I had to switch over to royalty free stuff, but it's good enough. It's pretty good. Absolutely free. You can play it. You can download it. Um, they just want you to put it in the, uh, if you make a YouTube video or something like that, they want you to put it in the comments section, put the name of their website, that's all. Isn't that awesome? It's probably computer made, but, um, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the show. This is the show I call the build up because we're in the process of building up to something that, um, none of us are quite sure where it's going to go, what it's going to be but we are on our path to it. And I try to do at least one show a week. Most of the time I make it, sometimes I don't. Um, but this week uh, was an exciting city council meeting last, last week, or last night. Sorry, it's been a long day at work and I love to get these evening shows out. I love to do them in the morning, but the mornings are usually pretty busy for me. But uh, I love Desert Hot Springs. I love living in Desert Hot Springs. I love the city. I like the people a lot. I've met some wonderful people from Desert Hot Springs, uh, and it's uh, it's really a, a it is a little shining gem on the on the hill here in uh, in the Coachella Valley, and I I I would have to say the city uh, seems to be there's something shifting and changing. And I've said this a couple times so far. Something something shifting. Something's getting a little better. Um, as far as what I've been fighting for, and uh, to bring awareness to. And uh, part of it has to do with the homeless situation that we've had. Uh, they've disappeared for the most part. I don't know what the city did with them. I don't know what other organizations did with them. The rescue mission. I don't know where they went. I don't know where they disappeared to. I know they have programs. I know they have outreach. I know they have pickup programs. I know they have drop-off programs. I know they have relocation programs. They have actually programs in different parts of the, uh, of the country where they will actually take uh, homeless. They will fly them. They'll fly them to another part of the country, usually to a, 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 res, a, um, a relative's location, a relative's uh, home city. So there are programs to move the homeless people. I don't know where they went, but I know I, I'm not going to take any uh, credit. All I want to say is that after I've done some activism to bring awareness to the homeless situation in Desert Hot Springs, people have disappeared, lots have been cleaned up, lots have been fenced off. Um, tree limbs have been cut that, that were people were sleeping under, um, and people have just disappeared. Uh, I don't, that was not my intention, it was to make people go away, but it, it has happened. And, um, what else is there? It's, um, it's really a great little city and it's, it, it, something's happening. Some people are getting involved. Uh, I hope I'm bringing awareness to, to people about, uh, a countering, view of what's going on. The key to tonight, the key thing I wanted to show you all tonight was a a video. I think it's this one here. I want to play for you a video because what we're facing as far as the narratives that we get fed by our city are uh, there's a there's a counter narrative to that and that's what I'm trying to bring. But how the city operates and how they get away with what they do is a lot of sleight of hand. It's a lot of it, it's 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 magic tricks almost is what is what it is. It's a spiritual. It's a it's an energy wave of of uh, of destroying wholesomeness, and it's about collectivizing and about putting us into a a managed system that is all uniform. It's, I've used it before. It's like, like they want Desert Hot Springs to be like another can of Spam. 
you know, Palm Springs spam, Palm Desert spam, Ranch and Mirage spam, Desert Hot Springs spam. And we're, after tonight's meeting, you, you'll see we're, we're headed towards that, that, fla that same original flavor spam. And that's because, I've told you before, it's a top-down management system. It's about controlling all the regions and the, all the, the counties, all the same from the same location. It's a franchise. It's basically they're franchising. Uh, they're, they're creating Desert Hot Springs, turning Desert Hot Springs into a franchise um, of the larger Borg system. And uh, it couldn't be more clear, the evidence that, that, uh, that was presented last night. And here's the metaphor, basically. I'm, I'm going to try to show this to you, but I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to slow it down into half speed. Um, because this, this pretty much tells a lot of what, where we're at. Let me turn the volume up here. So it's a, li it's a little echoey, but it really comes across better that way. So, what you have is a dolphin. By beating her tail down hard, this bottlenose dolphin stirs up the seabed. I know the sound is weird, but it, it's really important to watch this a little slower than the speed that they, that they presented it. What's happening in our city is one action is taking place that causes another action to happen, which then puts them in the position to do the third part. Now, I'm gonna show you uh, in my breakdown, these are my notes, I said in my, in my, in my announcement that I was gonna have a show tonight. My notes from last night's city council meeting, I mean, I have, the, the front page is covered, the second page has got notes on here, third page. The fourth page has got notes all down the side. The fifth page has got notes all over it like the front page. And then we have a little bit more on the sixth page. And then the, the rest was a consent calendar. So you can see I took tons of notes. And I spent the last two hours preparing for this show by writing not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not nine, but ten pages of small notes. My little quarter sheets. I love quarter sheets. So I, what I went through is I went through the, the video of last night's meeting. And I went and took a time stamp. So I don't have to waste uh, any more of your time uh, waiting for the points I'm going to make. But in my announcement, I laid out a lot of things that, that I wanted to show you about last night's meeting. And there's one really, really good example of it last night that is exactly what this is. Now, no one taught this dolphin this action. I mean, other dolphins passed it down. But what you're going to see is, is a pure prime example of one action not looking like what the final action is going to be. Now, let it, let it continue. And by swimming in a circle, she creates a ring of mushroomy mud around a shoal of fish. The fishing net made of mud. So what the dolphin did was it swam around. It's going to do in a corkscrew move here. And it's going to circle around. And what it's doing is it's trapping the fish in the center of that ring. Now this is not something that was taught besides other dolphins and other mammals underwater teaching this or you know uh, uh, fish amphibians I, I don't know where it comes from but it's a very simple concept to the fish the mud does not look like anything that's life-threatening as the net pulls tighter and tighter the fish are trapped as the net pulls tighter and tighter the fish are trapped until there's only one way out so there's only one way out because the fish won't swim through the mud that the dolphin has made with the tail. They won't swim through it, so they jump over the mud. And guess what's waiting on the other side? Straight into the mouths of the waiting dolphins.
fish, fish, and more fish flying up over the mud wall and into the dolphins' mouths. Did the fish think they were going to get eaten when there was a mud ring that started to form around them? No. But the dolphins knew to create the first phase to ultimately get the third phase. First phase mud, second phase fish jumping, third phase dolphins eating. Okay? Now what our city did last night was they created the mud ring. This is, this is an extremely simple concept to understand. I mean, it's, it's very, very simple. Why? Because what the city does is it passes one thing that doesn't look like what's going to pass later or happen later. And therefore, it leaves you with a, a tough ability to connect the two, but the two are very connected. So what they're strategically doing is they're doing the first part. They're doing the mud ring, and then later on, they'll do the eating. It's an extremely simple concept. Our city has access to people teaching these methods on how to get this done. Why? Because big business needs stuff passed in this city. And if they, if they, gave, it, if they gave everything to everybody to think about, they'd have a, a huge amount of trouble getting a lot of stuff passed. So what are they doing right now? They are purposefully waiting until they actually announce it on the agenda. Now, they're not announcing hardly anything that they really find important. Things that don't really don't matter, they'll let them be discussed on social media. You know, Councilmember Betts will go on there and he'll defend them. He'll say, oh, you know, his, his normal thing, he's good cop, bad cop. He's a good cop. They're the bad cop. He's a good cop. He pretends to be that other side, that voice of reason. You know, but everything still seems to get past. And he goes home at night, brings his little bag, and he's, what can you do? Ten years in this business. I don't like it, but I'm still following along with everything passing. Wait till you see what he said, when I replay what he said last night. Because that was part of what I, uh, what I, I put down on my uh, announcement that I was going to have the show. Is... Unbelievable. Let's go over here to... Um, so I wrote down, I'll give you my take on last night's sudden resignation of the Community Cultural Affairs member uh, who was um, uh, not, not very liked. Um, as, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't mind the guy. It's just he, he didn't like me at all. Um, the Palm Drive lane narrowing that's coming, and we got our city uh, public works director, Danny Poirier, saying they're going to be narrowing the lanes. So you don't like driving real close to cars on Palm Drive? They don't care. They're going to shrink those lanes down. So they're going to make you drive closer to the other cars. Why? Because they want to manipulate your driving style and slow you down. Oh, just like those little curb outs up on Palm near Pearson are. That's, that's meant to manipulate your driving. So they're, they're strategically and specifically altering your, your drive lane space. Now they say, well, you know, legally we, we don't have to have them that wide. But we live in this area because we like that, right? Well, no, they're going to make changes to your city. And they're doing it, and they're telling you they're manipulating you by doing it. And lots of examples are starting to really pop up more and more about that. Speed bumps are meant to manipulate your speed, to slow you down, to get you to go through residential areas a little slower. I understand. The speed limit on Palm is what it is, but they don't care. That's not enough. They're going to keep shrinking the lane down. They're putting the big islands in right along the side of the road. They're, they're, they're coming after your... Um, your subconscious. So they, what, that's what I'm saying is they're, that's their main focus is the marginal thought. The core thought, uh, you know, that's, is what it is. They're looking to manipulate the side marginal areas. And uh, one, of the, one of the great examples of that last night was um, a, a public speaker stood up and talked about the parade route. And I noticed that was floating around our, floating around our city on social media a little bit about the parade route, they, something on maybe even change.org, they want signatures, you know, to get, I mean, and these are people like really connected to the city council and mayor that are like going on and commenting and saying, yeah, I think it's a problem. The parade route for this year's parade, I think it's December, was it December 14th? Comes from Mission Lakes Boulevard down to, I think it's 2nd Street. There's a reason for that. And during last night's meeting, there was a public speaking, a public comment, uh, commenter. Um, this woman, 
she talked about the parade route, saying that there were concerns because there was a segment of, of Palm that was really well suited for that. And, you know, that this should really be looked at, re-looked at. They made their decision. You know, barring a riot in town, they're going to leave it where it's at. Why? They have their reasons. And while she was commenting last night, I watched very closely the eyeballs of the staff and the city council. They, at least half of them know why it's that route. And they won't tell you the route. They won't tell you why it's that route. They know the reasons why. And right around that time, they're going to be doing the resurface. They call it rehabbing or the, uh, I, uh, I don't know, some, some, something like, we saw it down in Palm Springs. They spray the road, they fill the roads cracks with, with gook. And then they spray the road black, and then they paint the new lines on it. They move the lanes. Why? Because black makes the white lines pop out better. So they, they do a, um, I swear, I, I can't remember what the word was. Hopefully we'll hear it tonight during the, uh, during the meeting, re the playback. I, a re redo or some, some, some simple word where it's just like basically they're slapping a coat of paint on it. They're, filling, they're caulking it in, they're slapping a coat of paint on it. Uh, they're removing the uh, little sticky bump things. By the way, those little reflector things you're seeing going up on all the roads for the autonomous cars. So, now that we know what we're looking for, we're looking for this first phase of the mud being created. There's the mud ring. Fish starting to jump out. And there are the dolphins waiting for them. So what I'm trying to impart on the viewers here is to start looking at the subtleties. Look at the marginal movements they're making. You can't take the face value for what they're doing because they're working, they're working, uh, it's, it's, you know, they're saying watch that hand, but this is the hand you're supposed to watch over here. This is the one that's doing the work that they want, they don't want you to see because they'll even, they'll even like, that's what magicians do. They look at the hand basically implying look there. But this is the one that's doing the, the other stuff, the trap doors and the stuff. So I'm trying to open your visual peripheral range wider so that you can see the sleight of hand. And I have not one, not two, but I think three points in last night's video where I'll show you where they admitted before they voted that they had already basically planned to do the vote anyway. And that's what you have in now in your city. You have a predetermined, prearranged voting result. And I can tell you right now, I, I'm 99% sure that when I get up here now and I say these things, they're actually responding to what I'm saying to you. They're changing their physical behaviors. You know, they're they're, you know, the, the eyeball guy is, is changing his behavior. Uh, last night, Councilman Russ Betts told me he took the tape off his glasses. You know, he was joking. He didn't wear tape on his glasses. I just found some nerd glasses as part of a costume shop when I put together his costume. They're, they're watching. They're seeing it. They'll never acknowledge it, but they kind of will. They do, most of them are doing it in subtlety. I, I don't want that. I don't care what they do. I'm doing it because it's entertaining. It gets people to think. And it gets people to listen to what I'm saying. When, if you start listening to what I'm saying and you don't like it, turn it off. If you start listening to what I'm saying and it makes sense, keep watching. Because we're going we're gonna to attract these people politically from here on out. They've got nowhere to go. They are following a script. And as I told somebody tonight on the phone, by the way, who's, who's uh, considering doing his own show right in this seat, all right? So we got a, somebody from Desert Hot Springs who is very interested in getting the word out on the things that he's concerned about. And we might have two shows. This is how media gets formed. I got the endurance. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep chugging away. And you may have another show that pops up here on this, uh, on this channel. But the point I was making was that they, they are responding. They're changing their body language. They're changing their, the things they're doing. I don't care. They're still going to go back to their, their ways, and they still got plenty of material to be goofy and, and cover them, but they're hollow people. They really are. There's really not much to them. They, they are good at, at, at understanding what they have to do, and then they're good at doing it. That's it. They're not creative. In fact, I told somebody on the phone tonight, 
I really feel sorry for them because th what they are, they are slaves. They are slaves to a larger system they can't get out of. Why can't they get out of? For a lot of reasons. Probably pretty selfish. Probably, they probably get a, 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 a I don't know, a, um, a, uh, an excitement out of doing what they do. You know, like some people get an excitement out of stealing, out of robbing, out of theft, petty theft, about taking candy out of the jar. In a, in a general store and walking out with it. You know, it's not about the candy. It's about the feeling they get from doing it. So I don't know what these people in city council get for an enjoyment out of this, but they're getting some sort of enjoyment out of what they're doing. And I can tell you, all I have to do is take what they're doing and put it into a search engine with other city names, and it's the same thing worded a little differently. And they even admitted last night at the meeting, they're basically slaves of California. So all you have to do is look at what other cities are passing in California, and sooner or later it's coming here. And I know to some of you it's not, it's not really uh, uh, new news that that goes on, right? I mean, some, some of us mostly understand that, okay, well, we're in the state of California. Okay, well, we're in the country of America. But that's not what we're being sold by these people at the Carl May Center, these people at City Hall. That's not what we're being sold. What we're being sold is something different. They say, we're here for you, you know, we, we're here to listen to you and do what, you know, what, what you want to hear, you know, this is your vote. You voted us in here. We're your representatives. You know, they tell us something, a fantasy, a fairy tale. And then once they're in, let's get to business. Let's start taking orders. What does the state want? What does the federal government want? What do they want? Come on. We're getting the grant money. They want something. What do they want? Okay, well, we'll start taking land away. Yep, we'll start doing that. No problem. And then when it comes to election time again, they go, I was born here. I was raised in this city. I really care about this city. I really care about the people in this city. I like to go hunt. I like to go hiking in the hills. In the city, I walk my dog in the morning on those streets. I listen to the birds in the morning of Desert Hot Springs. And as soon as they get reelected, all right, what are we getting done here? What are we stripping the people of now? And then they go to city council meetings. Wait till you see this. Wait till you see this. There's, there's 10 pages here. I better get into it. It's just it's just mind-blowing. So I'm going to pull up the, um, the meeting on one here. I got, I got the... The meeting on one tab, and I've got all my notes on another tab. So it was a very long meeting, and one item took a very long time. And thankfully, I don't have a, I don't have to spend a lot of time on that. It was about the Ranch of Del Oro, um, uh, uh, Gold Ranch, about um, you know they're annexing the, the landscaping and the lighting and all that stuff. I guess the city's going to take over the land. Something I didn't know, which Councilmember Betts said he had to recuse himself on that item, but he owns not one, but properties in there. He said it. He said, I own properties in Rancho Del Oro. Kind of a nice gig being on city council, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's why they want to stay, huh? One of the reasons why. Another reason why they want to stay is because if they get out, then they got to face everybody for what they've done. So it's easier just to stay in, right? So we'll start right in. I've got... um. Let me see what my my other notes were over here uh, in the inbox. Um, okay, so another big item, or bigger, bigish item was uh, 106 acres was rezoned, and boy, do I have the reason for that. Um, by the way, that was uh, that was item number what four a zoning amendment to the general plan amendment. Yeah, notice this, this is a, a quick little zoning and uh, amendment to the general plan. Right after they approved the, uh, the, the general plan in the last meeting, they, the, they're moving forward with it. I mean, they're, this, this is all synchronized and set. And by the way, the city council is not really who you're looking at. It's the city staff. That's, that's exactly, see, we have a micro version of what they call the deep state. The deep state is, is the holdovers. This is the career people. Those are the people who spend 30, 35 years, you know, doing the same thing. They know where everything's going. And then you get these elected people in now. See, see, this is not the republic 
It's not your grandfather's 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 republic anymore. Okay, this is, this is a system that cronyism has figured out how to operate, like, a, like backhoe levers, you know? All right, we got to dig out the resources over there. We got to plant them in front of City Hall. We got to get the City Council to pretend that it's something that, you know, is going to be good for the city. And then they take the resources and they say, thank you very much. And they split them up and they profit off them. See, the corporations have learned how to manipulate the system to their benefit now. And it's, it's what they do in front of you at the meetings is very phony. It's a very, like a show. I, I, I think one of my notes here I wrote is it it's like child's play. It's like a baby talk. That's what I wrote it was. It's baby talk, okay? Uh, because you have a councilwoman pie, you know, asking questions like, are they developing the property? You know, it, I mean, it, it says, I'm, I'll get to it and I'll show it. I'm trying to go fast because I don't want this to be too long because it gets redundant. Uh, clip after clip after clip. But it was, I think, number, was it number four? Yeah. Okay. We're approving a zoning change. No, that was Bet. That was uh, Councilmember Betts. I'll show you in, in the video. I have it in, in this note here. What they do is they sit there, and I'm trying to tell you some stuff as you watch, so you'll see the show. You'll see the, the performance, the acting that they do up there. Why? Because they, they pre-set, pre-determine what the vote's going to be in advance. So they get to the meeting, they know how they're going to vote. And that's why when they, when they get to the meeting, they don't have any questions for some of it. They don't have any, you know, they don't have any questions for the, the person who's going to benefit from these things. You know, for this reason, for, for example, this one here is the, um, the zoning map amendment, general plan amendment, uh, applications to change zoning and general plan land use designations for a 108-acre 100 site located on both sides of Yerksa Road north of San Gorgonio Street. Okay? So... They act like they don't know what that means. But what they're, all they're doing is they're filling a little bit of, a little bit of space with a little bit of uh, fake concern. You know, like when, when, an, when an item comes up, okay, and they do the public comments, and there's no public comments for or against, neutral, they can't just go, let's vote. They have to, they have to ask some phony questions. Can you explain what this means here? You, you know, they'll pick some obscure thing on the three documents that they, uh, they add to the agenda item on the, uh, on the website. You know, you, you get some, some additional documents. You can click on those. They'll pick some. They'll go on page two. It says here that you're rezoning to the general plan. Now, have their plans been approved? Have their plans been approved? This is the first initial part of, of anything that has to do with that. This is way before that. So they ask some phony question that pretends to look like they're concerned that, you know, this is what voters might be thinking. Now, is this a green light for them to, to have people swim in the pools? And, and you even hear, you know, like, the... The community development director is like, um, no, that's the code enforcement lady is like, uh, no, you know, you, uh, I think that's like a no trespassing sign, you know, because one of the items that's going to come up is, is about camping, homeless camping, okay, because what they just approved last night was they allow homeless to camp, now they've removed all the criminal penalties, okay, so. They, ha they, they say because it bogs the system down or blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you what that's really about. But that was, that was the uh, agenda item last night. Was that, and, and believe me, this was a, this was a, it was crazy to watch this because the mayor even admitted he lost control of the meeting and he was joking, laughing. Why? Because he had a couple of his supporters, Mr. and Mrs. Martin, which you're fine to do that. I'm glad you support him. But he favored them. You know... At one point, you know, Mrs. Martin came around during the 10-minute break they took, and she put her head right on his chest, and she was like, oh, it was so stressful uh, to stand up there and speak. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm not questioning, I'm not saying she's lying, but 
She spoke very well, and you'll see it in the video. She spoke extremely well. But what I'm saying is he, he, he allowed commenting to happen, and then it went away, and it came back, and it was, it was totally against the protocol. So, so what am I saying that for? Because if he doesn't allow it for somebody he doesn't like later, what does that mean? He allows it for one, doesn't allow it for another? It's hypocrisy. So I'm glad he allowed it. I like that loosey-goosey style. I'm fine with that. But they, uh, they got to get this stuff passed, and I'm sure they want to go home at some point. So, but if he likes you, you know he'll allow you to go a little long. If he doesn't like you, he'll cut you off. Basic human nature, basically, when you give people power. So, uh, let's go to the, uh, the beginning of the video here. I have it at 7.46. Good. We got the first part here. Yeah. Mike McCarty followed by Ron Reed. So, there was a big debacle. If you notice the harbor side. Good evening, council staff. If you notice the harbor side uh, dispensary at the 10 freeway, he announced last night, a big mural. They were going to spend like something like I don't know. I can't I can't remember how, how big the amount was. I mean it was huge. It was like twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars to paint a mural on that. And this, the Community Culture Affairs Commission has that money. I mean they've got a huge amount of money sitting there in that in that commission. Well, I could say I went to one of the meetings when, when the city council meetings when they were talking about and Har the representative from Harborside was there and they're like. I could tell they didn't like the font, they didn't like the design, and even Councilman Betts was talking about it. He's like, ah, that's not the right one. Well, this guy says they pulled Chief out. And the public. I wanted to clear up two events projects that the CCAC, of which I am chair, approved. First, the billboard mural for the water tank will not be happening. After months of work and time, the owner told the city that he did not want it in place. Uh, the city must now activate and certify that all of the planting initially planned to cover the water tank at Harborside be completed. So you're to switch to plants, I guess, to hide the, hide the tank. Okay, then he goes on to basically uh, slam people who had the second uh, Veterans, Day affair, uh, Veterans Day event at the park, basically saying they didn't get permits and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, he didn't like me. I won't say too much about it. I no longer have the truck. So then he goes on to um, to say this. The process being followed according to the city laws and ordinances. Therefore, tonight, November 19th, 2019, I hereby resign from the Community and Cultural Affairs Commission effective immediately, and I thank all of those who have supported us, and I wish all the remaining commission commissioners well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ron Reed. <laughs> thank you for your comments, Ron Reed. You know, <laughs> this guy, man. People put up, you know, heartfelt thing. I hear your comments. Moves right on, you know. And then somebody said something uh, later on, and uh, you know, it was heartfelt. And he's like, "Okay, next commenter or next public speaker." So pretty. So here's here's the next one. Hey guys, how are you? Um, I'm here tonight just to talk about the new parade route that I've seen um, posted. Um, I have some concerns and I just wanted to ask that that route be reconsidered and the traditional route be reinstated. Okay, so I don't know who this is, but the, what I'm talking about is fake outrage. Now what will happen is a power structure that's under pressure by the community, the community that, that, is, um, that they're having to face is having some problems. And what's happening is you're seeing a, a very uh, a speeding up. Your city's speeding up and things are moving a lot faster. They gotta get a lot of stuff done faster because it's kinda like when they say that kind of the house of cards is kinda falling so they're, they're trying to quickly grab all the cards. So, so what's happening is your city is like bang, 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 bang. Governor Newsom's bang, bang, bang. They're trying to move a lot of stuff through really quick. They're saying cars are, you know, we're not buying cars Trump likes or whatever. And, you know, it, it's, just, it's just going like bonsai style on everything. But what, what I think this whole parade route and the petition thing about is about just about fake outrage. It's about uh, drawing people who are kind of not sure about what's going on. Like the community is getting a little upset at like what's going on because there's some things going on. They're kind of changing the city. What's this low, the housing, what they're going to bring poor. So what they do is they'll pop out this 
pretend crisis, like, oh, the parade route, you know, we're going to petition going. Uh, so what it does is it draws, it draws people like, like moths to a flame. Whoa, petition, you know, I'll help fight with you. So what it does is it, it, it absorbs, it absorbs some of the outrage or some of the concern and it gives them a, an area that they control to express that outrage because it, they can't have people kind of like going looking into stuff. So they go, look over here, look over here, over here, look, we got a problem. Yeah, it's the parade route. Join us. We're fighting it, you know, and it gives people a feeling like they're doing something meaningful that, you know, the half aware of the people who are kind of like, what, you know, this one's a city, a city's doing what? Oh, the parade route. Oh, oh, is that really what that's? Yep. That's, that's the big thing. We're, we're working on it. Yep. Join our petition. So, you know, she comes up and she basically talks about that. Um, although the new route has places for people to watch, it is not nearly as conducive to the thousands that lined, the, that lined to the traditional parade route. And this kind of stuff, I mean, I'm not saying that this person might have put this together just for just to distract people, but those kinds of little things pop up all the time. That's why some people will say, oh, I made a petition and like two people signed it. Then somebody will make a petition that's like, like a, a dumber idea and like a thousand people will sign it. Why? Because it fits better. It's something that they can, they can say, look over there. That's a good one. And so your petition was a much better uh, solution, but the dumb one is like got all the attention because that's a better one to distract everybody. So I'm not saying that the person put together just to distract people. I'm saying that they'll put up a petition and then it'll catch fire in, in the public because it suits, you know, the, the uh, distraction better. So that's, that's what I'm saying about that. There are many businesses along the traditional parade route. So let's go to 2807. That part of the parade by joining. That's why I was a little bit late. I had I had to finish up. And awarded or move forward with the SB 21 grant, which we're currently working on the request for proposals for design. Uh, that project will pierce into Eighth Street, and just sort of wait this week and next week as uh, they did have warranty, and we will be replacing those on front. And just sort of. I posted a picture, a couple pictures, on the Independent News Desert Hot Springs page that I run. I'm blessed to run. I love that little page that you're watching this live on. And I hate it when this happens. I, I, I stopped here. I'm not going to skip over it. I'm going to point it out. I don't want any credit. I don't even think it was my credit, but I have to point out Public Works Director used my exact words. From my post. I don't know how it happened, but I just was driving up home one morning and I noticed those trees in the middle of the island. Maybe people were talking about it before that. I don't know. I just know that I posted it and the next meeting he's talking about it. So this is what he said. What he knows the entryway, there are some palm trees that did not survive the, the transport and replant. It does happen. Uh, they did have warranty and we will be replacing those on Friday of this week. They did have warranty? My hair is standing up because I put in there, I hope they have a warranty, a return warranty on those trees. Hey, listen, I don't care how it gets done. I want the city to be better. That's my goal. This city deserves better. It needs better. It wants better. And I don't care who does it, how it happens. I'm just doing what I think I'm good at. I probably am awful at it, but I'm doing what I like to do. I won't say good at or awful. I say I like to do this. I like to do this, and things seem to be getting a little bit better. Okay, they're still blowing tons of money. They're still doing a lot of stuff I don't like, and they're still following an agenda. But I got to say, some things are getting better, all right? And, like, this is, this is an example where I don't know. I don't know. It's what I said. I, I mean, if you see a post... If you know of a post out there that happened before I posted my comment about that saying they don't look so good, you know, a couple of them don't look so good. I hope they have a warranty. If something was floating around before that, I'd love to see it. I'm not, I don't want to, but you know, maybe it does. Maybe it did. Maybe they were talking about it. Maybe the, maybe the company put them in and said two weeks ago that trees aren't going to make it. I don't know, but I like it. I'm done. As she says, uh, 2807, 2835. So 2835. We got to do through viewpoint now versus the old app that, uh, and I'd like you to discuss a little bit about the new approach to uh, reporting uh, issues within the city through viewpoint now versus the. Old 
So now there, there's no app now. He said it went dead or something like that. So now you have to log in. You have to create an account on Viewpoint now if you want to report issues for the city. Now, now they know that the average person or below is not going to figure out how to do this. So this basically is a way for them to basically, now we don't have to hear from a whole bunch of people. So, but at the same time, that's not what they're choosing to do. What they want to do is they want to have centralized access. They want to give centralized access to that higher power structure, that top-down control. So what they're doing is they're, they're relocating the, the reporting of issues in the city system. They're now linking it to a larger Borg, rather than just an app where it's kind of like some piece together thing where, you know, uh, you know, did you get that text or, you know, or by your phone? Now you have to log into a website, which is much more easy to, to, to monitor, to access, to put into a database, to, to, to get um, statistics from, to, uh, to manage from a, 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 an outside source. You know, telling our city, this, these are the ones you're going to tend to, these are the ones you're not going to tend to. So basically, it's them conforming to a larger system. Now, they, that, that's what they're going to keep doing for the next several years. They're just going to keep, uh, keep linking us and, and creating more web cables to the larger system until we're basically chained down by a larger control system. This is all they're doing is just implementing top-down instructions, top-down orders, uh, and, and they, that's why when people complain. They, they're not listening to me because they got too much to do from the state and federal government and international groups. So it's called Viewpoint. An old app that uh, is no longer functioning. Mm, so we've had um, some issues with the app, uh, specifically with iOS users. Mm. Um, we have kind of combated that issue by using our new internal software. Now, that might be right, but again, it's all ultimately going to be controlled and accessed and, and monitored and scanned and databased and, uh, and, and compartmentalized and, uh, by, by a larger centralized system. It's all going to the, to the wireless internet, real internet of things, real-time data. They want to know real-time, what's your beef, you know, and, and, and that way... The whole nation, bing, 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 are they all, what are they complaining about? But, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, a, like a lightning flash, you know, where everything is, uh, you know, the same complaints. They can, they can st st statistic-wise, they can see and they can, they can expect what they're going to expect when the weather changes. You know, they're going to they're know what the complaints are going to be. It's all about a, a big hive, uh, a big crystal ball, knowing, you know, our movements and knowing everything that's going to be, gonna be, we're going to be asking to, for them to fix. So residents can report complaints. Twenty eight thirty five. So then we got thirty three oh nine. That's twenty hours that we're going to prepare. This guy's talking about CERT. They're bringing they're back they're CERT. Considered a community emergency point. response training. Take any questions. Which basically is them buying a big trailer and holding some classes, and then the trailer sits for about four years in the same lot. Well, I just want to say it sits. I fizzled that. Uh, good evening. I'll give a little bit of background for some of the residents. That so now they're talking about the 12th Street Park that, that they basically have to put in. And if you look at the Vortex Plan, what they've done with the Vortex Plan now is they've, they've shattered the Vortex Plan and they're actually putting in pieces of the Vortex Plan, which is an amphitheater at the intersection of Paul and Pearson. By the way, the Vortex Plan calls for a big archway, an archway, which you can see in so many Southern California cities. The archway, you know, gateway to San Jacinto, whatever they call it. That'll go somewhere in the city. Eventually, that'll come up, and they'll uh, and they'll announce it like three days before they're going to approve it. You know, kind of thing. Whether they just hide it and hide it and hide it, and then that's the shifty eye part of it. You know, you see, I watched them, and they, you know, when she was talking about the parade route, you know, they knew the parade route, the reason why it had to be that way, maybe to to condition you for the new bike lanes or whatever they're going to be doing. Or maybe they're going to be doing construction down there. Or maybe they're, you know, they've got their reasons, but they just, they just sit there and don't tell you. So they're, I could see their faces. They're like, I know why we're not doing it that way, but I can't tell her. And there's, you know, they're just, you know, they're just looking around like, like, man, <laughs> keeping secrets from people's fun. <laughs> so, you know, now he's talking about the 12th Street Park, which he announced is going to have, uh, they're looking to put an amphitheater in it. 
might be hearing about this for the first time. Earlier this year, between January and June, the city ran a public engagement process to explore ideas for a park explore. to be built on the northeast corner of 12th Street and Palm Drive. Explore ideas. Yeah, yeah, we're going to explore ideas. We're going we're gonna to listen to you. When you tell us you want something, we're going to pretend we're listening. First of all, we're going to look really interesting. Oh, really? Like a water slide. That's a good idea. I'm going to pretend I'm writing. You know, water slide. And then I'll put an X at the end of water slide because it's never going to happen. Really? What else would you like? Oh, monkey bars? Oh, monkey bars. I'll write down monkey. That's a good idea. And then later on, they come, they come back and they got something totally different. And they're, they, but they say, we listen to the public. We listen to the community. We have workshops. Right. We had several public meetings and outreach events, and then in August, we submitted those ideas as part of a comprehensive grant yeah. application to the statewide park program for funding to create a new park on the two-acre... Yeah, we submitted those ideas. Basically, we led, we led the people at the meeting into the ideas we wanted them to like, and then when they all nodded, those are the ideas we submitted. <laughs> space with proposed features like an amphitheater or a playscape, outdoor oh. exercise equipment, walking paths, sitting areas. Walking. You can bike to it. You can walk around it. See? Walkable structures. cities. The grant amount that the city requested was $4.1 million. $4.1 million. We received questions from the state asking for clarification on a few of... What a great place to burn a bunch of money. Yeah. You know, so, so basically we have the Veterans Park. Uh, that's very lightly used, but three streets down from that, we're going to put another park in. No, so they're building, they're they're laying the the ground stones, the foundation for this utopia that they want to build. They don't even want to build it. They're just happy to keep secrets from people on what they're doing, and basically create a version of Desert Hot Springs that some other international group figured out would be best for humans. Okay. Now these, the, again, they can do this because they're not creative people. They just don't come up with many good ideas. So by doing this, this gives them all the, oh, we're, we're giving you a park. I can give you a park. Well, who, who really created the park? Well, we were bound to a lot of things we had to put in it. Uh, but, but we did the paperwork. The application specifications. And we sent a response, and then about a week later received a request from the state for a site visit. So while no award has been decided, we are okay. encouraged by last month's questions and next month's site visit, and we hope to hear a decision before the end of the year. All right, moving on to the next Valley one. Conservation Commission. All right, where did, where did he go? We attended the... Uh... So, Councilman Gary Gardner, he attended the land grab meeting. Why do I say land grab meeting? Because this, as I've shown you on past episodes, is where we're going. The biodiversity map. Now, what did our bald friend say? The Coachella Valley Conservation Commission. We had a very big agenda. <coughs> swallowing, <laughs> swallowing a lump there. Purchased a lot more land for conservation around the city and preservation across the valley, including how much? 650 acres in Thousand Palms, just east of DHS. How much again? Repeat that. Including 650 acres in Ooh. Thousand Palms. Do you mean to say what you're doing is you're creating this? What's this? This is the United Nations map of America. And what does the biodiversity map say? Red zones are core reserves and corridors. Little to no human use. Have you noticed on Mountain View all those little wire fences and those little poles going up, as I've said in the last show or a couple of shows ago? Have you noticed all those little fences going up? Those little, little brown signs? We purchased the Coachella Valley Conservation commission. Oh, so basically, again, here's a non-creative person, just, we, we're saving the earth, but it's a plan since the 90s, and they've had maps out for decades. This is all to be 
little to no human use, all the red. And what's the, what's the yellow uh, zone say? Buffer zones, highly regulated use. So this is your America that your council is now buying up. We bought 600, and but wait, there's more. What else did he say they bought? Just east of DHS, and another 193 acres up along Mission Creek, right at the oh. entrance to Sands to Snow. 193 Creek, acres. So what is it, 650, 193? That's 750, 850? Almost 900 acres in one meeting they bought up? Hoo-wee! They gotta hurry up. They gotta hurry up and get that map fulfilled. Oh, man. They got very little time. Where are we? We're over in here. Yeah, we're right over in there. There's a whole lot of red over in there. Yeah. Again, red is core reserves and corridors. Little to no human use. So how do they get you no human use? They put a fence up. And they say it's for the plants and animals. And then 120 mi mile wide international zone of cooperation, which is the orange zone. The green is normal use. Yeah, that's all you're going to get out of your country. That's their utopia. That's the international plan utopia. That's why this is going to be so easy to call them out on. I mean, we all have seen the Back to the Future movie. You know that Back to the Future movie when Biff got a hold of the book? You know? The statistics, the, the scores. And he went back in time. And he actually bet on the teams that were going to win. That's basically what this is. Your city is now pretending like they don't have the playbook. Oh, I don't know. conservation. Just... That's why they won't talk to me. That's why they avoid me, like, because I know what they're doing, and I don't like it. Because again, if they admitted it, this is what they're doing. It'd be a different story. But for them to pretend that we're just we just like the city, we like to hike here, and we was born and raised here, and and uh, it's your choice. We we're just looking out for the you know, they're following a script. I know this. I know the script. This is the script. <laughs> this is the script. And they're doing it, step by step by step. And I don't, I don't know how else to tell you. I mean, I'm showing you what they're doing. Look at this. Look down here in Florida. Look at all that red. That's little to no human use. Look what that's going to be. It's everywhere. So right now you've got city councils down here going, we just bought up another 30 acres, 30,000 acres. We bought another 3,000 acres for the conservation. Yeah, conservation because... What do they call your most precious resource around here? Water? It's not people. The most precious resource we have in the Coachella Valley is water. It's not people. No, not in this plan. This plan, you are not important. And I don't know what they get for enjoyment out of scamming like this, but they like it. And we actually decided that the pronunciation of the acronym for multi-species habitat conservation. Oh, here's program. where he throws in a joke. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a knee slapper. Well, which we all think is a mouthful, is now pronounced mush cap. So, much easier <laughs> to say. <laughs> mush cap. <laughs> okay. And lastly, mm -hmm. uh, was at, with, uh, with all of my colleagues here, was at the Diversity DHS Pride event up at Cabot's this okay. last weekend. Another stellar event. Congratulations to the out of University DHS team as well. <laughs> Try, trying to put on a speech, but he knows he's withholding so much information that you can't you can't hear about yet. Then you hear about the, you hear from the next council member. Was oh, you may have to watch this. The in second parts. one. They... So. I'm gonna try to go faster. I, I get I get going, and it's just it's just so upsetting that I get going on these people. So this one, he go he says he did a ton of stuff in the last two weeks, but he goes through it really fast. I'm not gonna go Over through it. Had we held it here in Desert Hot Springs, brought over a hundred owners and operators of Hot Springs prop. So what I see them doing uh, now is is I don't know if they knew it was going to be a long meeting, but what they're doing is they're telling us where they went in the last two weeks and what meetings they went to. Now that's all they're doing in some some cases. They're just saying I went to this meeting, then I went to this meeting, then I went to this meeting, 
That's all I have to say, Mayor. So these are representatives of us in this city. And they're going out and they're meeting with Southern California Association of Governments. They're going out and meeting with Riverside County Transit Commission. They're going out and they're meeting with uh, these different groups all around Southern California. And that's all they're saying. I went to the, the CVEP, Coachella Valley Economic Partnership. I went to that meeting. And uh, it was good. They don't tell you what they're doing at the meeting, what they're discussing anymore. They're, they're, they're putting more and more stuff into this little hidden box. I went here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you do there? They're being very cautious now to not tell you what they're doing at these meetings. Greece, from so, around the country, over 20 states, four countries, and two provinces in Canada. Then we have... Uh, we had a really nice uh, welcoming dinner at Cabot. If I wasn't there, that would have been a little make deck. Cities we had... And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it was very busy. Um, you know, we're, we're blessed in this city as we had uh, three veterans events... Uh, going on we had the he first talks one. about the veterans events and then uh, he goes into um staying in a circle and the speaker who was supposed to be the uh, hell but i wish i could have gone to that pretty type thing too much end up being thrown into the limelight and so you know we're blessed we had uh three events and then we went down to the bfw which friends of the desert mount okay 4320 4330 uh, in california association you're going to see a second Verge, uh, second uh, example of fake outrage, all right? Now, there's a big, huge concern right now about cell towers and cell towers going up and what all this radiation is doing to us. So what, I, what I'm calling out Councilman Bess, Betts on is his fake outrage, because watch, watch what he says. The government's in arena. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a second, but you know, the thought crossed my mind was, you look at all these cell towers we got going all up over the city, and I don't know if anybody realizes, but I was reading some stuff like an NBC report, a report of National Public Radio. For Globalist outlets, by the way. NBC, NPR, the Corporation of the Globe. They are, they are recipients of funding from the corporate global corporation that our city council is inserting us into. So he's listening to those sources, and those sources are for the cell towers. They're for the spying. They're for all this stuff. So that was his first mistake. He was listening to those mainstream sources. 45% of the cell traffic is junk robocalls. So he's saying 45% of, of the cell phone traffic is junk robocalls. So I know everybody's getting a lot of these calls, so I'm sitting there saying, are we putting up cell towers? Are 45% of the cell towers going up our city just to accommodate these robocalls? And I know that we don't want to get an agenda item started here, but and I certainly appreciate that everybody that's out there that's got a cell phone uh, wants to get a good signal. But you know, I'm wondering if we just go ahead and put up a moratorium, any more cell towers, until somebody figures out how to stop all these um, robocalls. So. Oh, really? Is that really your concern with cell towers? That there, that a bunch of the traffic is robocalls. You know, they're saying forty-five percent of it is robocalls. I can't say whether that's true or not. But is that your concern with cell towers? With all the all the scientific studies about the, what the radiation is doing, about the headaches, about the people who can't sleep anymore once they put up a cell tower within a quarter mile of their house, is that your concern? Was that is that there's too many robocalls? Maybe you can get them to stop so many robocalls. I think he says that later on here. Maybe we can get something done. Did he say it already? They, these robocalls. And I know that we don't want to get an agenda item started here, but, and I certainly appreciate that everybody that's up. Get an agenda item started to like, to stop cell phone towers because of robocalls filling up the airtime? There that's got a cell phone uh, wants to get a good signal. But, you know, I'm wondering if we just go ahead and put up a moratorium, any more cell towers, until somebody figures out how to stop all these um, robocalls. Yeah, moratorium on cell towers because there's too many robocalls. Now, I don't know where that came from. I don't know where. Maybe it's the environment that he's in with all this stuff with city council that they, they start to just get this delusional state of, like, maybe, maybe that's what they see. Maybe they see, like, this delusion of problems as something way abstract from what's really what everybody is concerned about. I don't know whether that's the environment he's in that's causing that to happen or if he's just bluffing us. I don't know what it is. But 
that is ridiculous that that you bring up the cell phone towers uh, you know it again it, it can easily be thrown in the box of fake outrage it's outrage it's misdirected outrage you know you you have much bigger things about the cell tower to be concerned about than how many robocalls come through i mean you don't recognize the number that's it you know people are getting robocalls all the time there it's much easier than your home phone your home phone you couldn't even see the number you'd have to go pick up and go hello and they go hi sir I was hoping, and then you got to hang up. At least with a cell phone, you don't recognize the number, you're done. So, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, but that that was uh, that was not good. That was that was silly. Um, then he he races through with no details. Um, forty two forty. I'm past that. Fake outrage. We did that. So forty four forty. He talks about, you know, the the Reno numbers. I don't know if he's trying to put people at ease that you know the numbers aren't going to be as bad. They're going to be bad. There's, there's no doubt about that. He's saying that somehow they got... And Orange Burns is on big votes that are coming up. Los Angeles and Orange County show up. They dwarf the board with their votes because they hold the law. So he basically tried to say that he went to the meeting and somehow they made like a magical deal to get some of the numbers off of the back of Desert Hot Springs. So instead of 8,000, we're going to get 6,000 and something maybe number. Now, and I don't even trust any of those. Those are just like... Like, you know, sometimes they'll give out a high number to get people all concerned. And then later on, they'll say it's much lower because they'll say, you were worried it was going to be 6,000. So what they do is they try to defer the blame onto the people by going out there on social media saying, it's going to be 8,000, it's going to be 8,000. It turns out it's like 5,000. And they're like, you thought it was going to be eight. You are untrustworthy as the public, you know. So, so there's, there's lots of little, little side play going on and, and little bits of manipulation that are that are considerable. You have to consider that that's possibly what's going on. Because again, it's all this peripheral play that they're doing is really where where the main meat lay, uh, lays. The core is stuff anybody can see, anybody can kind of like think is going on, stuff they'll say. But what they're doing on the sides and how they're playing you off, people off and how they're uh, manipulating is, is really where most of it's at. So then we go to 40... 4730, let's go to 4730. That was, um, that was Councilwoman Pie. I'm going to be short, and I just want to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving filled with gratefulness. She turns the mic off and she goes, I'm done. So, she has time to spend and tell us what she's done for the last two weeks, and she just says, Happy Thanksgiving. That's, that's what she's filling us in on. I mean, it's a nice sentiment. But for two weeks, our representative was out there doing stuff in the name of the city, and she just says, Happy Thanksgiving. All right, then. So, and then we go to... I think we want to just read for that report tonight. It's always great to see you in, in the plant rather than the ground and all the problems we have and have had in the future. This is kind of a this is kind of a juvenile dig, but I think it's kind of funny. Okay, listen to the wording the mayor says. I mean, I I probably made these slips. I've probably made these slips many times, but it's it's kind of a little funny to say to show you. It'd be in the plant rather than the ground, and all the problems we have and have had in the future. So thank you. All the problems we have and have had in the future. It's petty, I know, but he's talking about how how the. The Mission Springs Water District Vice President um, uh, was talking about how the, the sewer line is going to be paid for. You know, I'm watching that, but that's kind of like, there's nothing really interesting. The guy that looks like Elvis. I'm sorry. The guy looks like Elvis. I, 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 don't, I don't know what his name is. Um, can't think of his name. But he was talking about the sewer lines are going to be going in, how it's going to be paid for. And the mayor was commenting on thanking him for that report. And uh, again... Hey, um Thank you to Mission Springs Water District for that report tonight. It's always great to see when these assessment districts get put into place and that uh, the waste is going to be in the plant rather than the ground and all the problems we have and have had in the future. So thank you for your work. And the problems we've had in the future. Love it. Anyway, I know that, that one was petty. Sorry. Work on that. Okay, um, then we Hot got conference uh, was just uh, wonderful. The I thought this was very interesting. Job. Somebody actually told me about it, but it actually was admitted last night. 
not everybody. That um, the founder of the Desert Hot Springs Neighborhood Group, the the group uh, that someone told me the first members of it were the media. It was the newspapers. He's always going to agree on everything, but the city council should support our commissions in full on their pathways. So here it comes. He's going to announce that somebody has moved out of the city. And that's what I continue to do. Um, if you didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Donnelly uh, Poesina, she was our local photographer for so long, lived here in the community, had to move outside the community. We'll be back to take pictures, she says, and be part of the community. And is going to keep the De Desert Hot Springs Neighborhood Group uh, Facebook page going. So if you were concerned about that, she has agreed to keep that going for the time being until she can find some For the time being? You mean it might go away? Someone to take that over. It's really an Oh, somebody might take it over. Going to keep the Desert Hot Springs Neighborhood Group uh, Facebook page going. So, if you were concerned about that, she has agreed to keep that going for a time being until she can find someone to take that over. It's really an important piece to Desert Hot Springs, and I think she deserved the accolades that we gave her it was last Sunday, right? Last Sunday. So, she moved out of the city, and the, the chair of the Community Cultural Affairs Commission resigned. You got other people dropping like flies out of other commissions. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what is going on with the city with these seats, but something, something's changing. I mean, I'm sure they've all got their valid reasons and stuff like that, but we're in a time of change, I'll tell you that much. And uh, it's some of this change I'm glad to see. That woman never liked me, never, never liked me. She said a lot of bad things about me. Um, I, I worked off of my gut feeling. I, I could see what she was doing. She, she was, when I first moved into the city, she was my first, my first like um, flashing red light of, because I had already done a lot of research on, on all that, that map stuff I showed you, the agendas and the, the international uh, plans for you know, the bikes and the, 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 uh, the lanes and all this stuff, and all this stuff changing all, you know, across the globe. I mean, it's Europe, it's the West, it's, I mean, I can't, I mean, pretty soon they're going to start putting bike lanes in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous what what's coming because it's all a centralized plan. It's like it's like if you it's like if you went to a hamburger, you know, hamburger joints. All you did was go to hamburger joints and visit them all over the country day after day. And pretty soon, like you start to see, they all are starting to get a big yellow M on the front. And people are, you know, there's a little guy with floppy shoes in there. You know, calls himself the ham burglar. And you know, the ca colors are starting to be the same. You kind of start to catch on that they're all becoming McDonald's, you know. Uh, were you bought out? Yeah, we were bought out. Well, who are you bought out by? Well, we, we can't tell you. But you're starting to see that they're all getting the yellow and the, the uniforms. Are, they're wearing the same hats. They have the big yellow M on them. And they're like, you're like, what's the M stand for? And they go, oh, Melvin or whatever. But every, every place you go to, it's all the same yellow M. But they won't admit that they're all changing over to McDonald's. It's that silly. You know, we're, we're seeing all the things happening in the city. And I was watching what that woman was doing on her page, and she was pushing the same kind of stuff. I mean, it's not a coincidence. You know, she was pushing the little tiny houses, and the tiny houses are coming back. You know, it's like, it's like the... I, again, I don't think they're creative enough to come up with this stuff. They're being fed some sort of, like, preconditioning agenda. You know, what do I talk about on my page? Oh, push this. This is coming. Or this is a good thing to push. Maybe she didn't even know. But she, she was pushing the same stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute. That is a part of a larger plan. And people are like, no, it's not. You jerk. You know, shut up. You know, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, it's kind of part of the same plan. I'll show you where it's part of it. And they're like, no, you're just crazy. She left the city. I hope she's not going somewhere else to start this whole thing she did here there. Goodness gracious, I hope that's not happening. She called it my city. I didn't like that. I don't, you know, this isn't my city. This is, you know, when we had the, um, the forum, candidate forum at the uh, Vista Montagna, she's just like loud and aggressive with me and, you know, what have you done in this city? You know, and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I volunteer and I've, I've Honestly, my contribution has been this, kind of like back when, you know, um, you know, Michael, uh, I won't say his name, uh, rhymes with perk. He, uh, he was coming after me because he was making some sort of, you know, where's, where's Mike Perk? Where's Mike Perk? You know, he's doing these kooky videos, and I, I started to talk about this stuff. 
And it was right around that time I was doing my, my, my form of activism then, trying to bring some awareness to this is a, this, she's following a script here. And, you know, they were attacking me and all that stuff. So I've been trying to bring light to this agenda for a long time. And now she's gone. So I hope she's not doing, again, I hope she's not doing it in some other city. I hope that's not the case. Because uh, it is not what we want. It's not what we're voting for. It's not what we're asking for. But these people are making us take it. And that's, again, if they admitted it, it'd be different. And if we had foreknowledge of what they were doing, it'd be a totally different thing. But they're pretending that they're not. And they're pretending they're here to do um, this saint work for the city. Like they're going to, it's for keeping you safe. It's, you know, it's like the, the baby talk. It's insulting. They're baby talking us through this. Some of us know what they're doing, and the baby talk is insulting. So, let me keep going here. I've got 10 pages and I've only done two. This is not good. 33, 44. Yeah, so that one's done. Okay. Where were we at here? Uh-oh, lost my place. Uh, oh yeah, 5405. So we're gonna go to that next. I attended the 5405. He just gave a brief I, uh, synopsis of what he went and did. Uh, wasn't wasn't anything really to point out as far as. So let's see where. Item it's, number four is up because of a campaign finance uh, conflict. Oh, this is this was interesting. Okay, we'll get cards here for you. No, I have to uh, uh, announce that I'm recusing from. Okay, so. Whole pocket will get cards here. <laughs> Councilman Gardner had to recuse himself from item number four, zoning map amendment. This is the 108 acre site located on both sides of Yerksa Road north of San Gorgonia Street. So he had to recuse himself. He couldn't vote on this item, and he tells you why. For you. Now, I have to uh, uh, announce that I'm recusing from item number four uh, on the agenda because of a campaign finance uh, conflict. So, thank you. Let me elaborate. Now, he's he obviously just said he said he can't he has a conflict of interest on this item, so he can't vote for or against. He's told they're going to vote. They've passed the thing. They're all told to vote yes. So if he voted yes, he would be in trouble because he obviously received campaign money from somebody connected to this group on item number four on the agenda. Now. On the surface, that looks like it's pretty good, okay? He's not going to vote because he took money from somebody on that project or somebody on that planned project, right? But the problem is they're all one. They're all one unified vote with one pretend uh, non-vote at times. So what I'm going to tell you is that he, it didn't matter that he recused himself. It didn't matter. Because remember when the triple card was up there? When they had Pi, Mattis, Gardner? Remember that? That's one vote anyway. So if, let's look at it this way. If somebody from this item number four, from this 108-acre 108 acre site, gave Gardner money, then they're all thankful for that. So they will all reciprocate what this group on 100 Acre site, I don't even know what the name of it is. They basically will, they will bend over backwards to do what this project wants. To, they, they, will, they will pass this amendment to the general plan and they will change, they will gladly change the zoning and general plan use designation, general plan land use designation for this group because they paid money to Gardner. You see what I'm saying? They're all, one, they're all as one, so if a group pays to one, that one steps out, but the rest of them still vote for whatever that group wanted. That's the problem you have when you have a unified city council that is not diverse as far as their their connection. You have to have a, a, a wall between each one so that they are individual votes, not a unified vote across the board. 
which if you go to any of the meetings now, it's like green, green. I mean, I'm getting so tired of hearing the city clerk saying, motion passes unanimously. It's over and over and over and over and over. Then with bets, no. It's motion passes unanimously, except bets says no. So you're seeing a good cop, bad cop, but what's what's hiding underneath it all is that campaign contributions don't just go to one it goes to all of them that's my point so he steps Anyone out have any conflicts on this item okay mr garner will be stepping off the dais i'll be announcing the item while he's stepping off item number four so on number four we had a couple of big 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 things to point out i hope you're sticking with me because this is it's going to get a lot better too uh, let's see, 5730. Let's go to 5730, which is a few minutes earlier. In terms of our planning and getting more feedback from the community. Okay. So what, this is the representative from that 180 acre site. And I, I want you to hear the subtlety, and, and maybe they'll change their way of speaking when I go to the meetings. They'll change it for me so I can't catch this. But the leopards don't change their spots. Okay, zebras don't change their stripes. Their stripes stay the same. Now, what he, what he says, this representative of this, the guy who wants them to pass this, is that his words are, continue with our planning. Okay, listen to, listen to how he says it love to hear it and in terms of community feedback um, we're listening and uh, we'd like to continue uh, with, with our planning and get so it's a foregone conclusion is basically what you can see they're they're doing here and and believe me that's not even the best example of it there's more so they they predetermine the vote they pre-plan the vote before the meeting and they all know it they all know it. They just have to figure out whatever little issues come up. They just have to figure out how to, how to wrangle around them and throw a little bit of a little shaving of something to the group that doesn't want it to happen or feel out the group that doesn't want it to happen. If they're really not that serious about fighting back, they'll go, well, we heard your concerns, but we're passing it anyway. So that's, that's the first one. Then you had uh, opposition testimony, which was at 1 minute 4. So basically they had the, the for it. This is this is the 105. So I'm planning on my grandmother living until she's on. This woman went on and on about herself. And she's she's I guess office. she's she's created a, a capital firm that that is going to be putting this this place together where they're going to have uh, I think like a 12 acre lake out there. I don't know. It sounds pretty pretty amazing. Started this project. It seemed like it was just going to be that the Courtney and Courtney Mo. I don't know who that is. But that career thing, you know. full circle part of anything first I my grandmother I, she just went on and on and on and on and on and on and on my like partners several wound minutes. up bringing thank you thank you very much any more uh, testimony in favor remember this this episode is about catching the subtleties that mean more than the core this episode of my show tonight so what I'm working on is is getting out I'm I'm, I'm, I'm throwing a magnifying glass on each of the subtleties because believe me they say they say tonight he, they will say we are passing when he's asking questions before they voted he's like tonight we're passing um this because of this you know they're they're admitting that they're they're going to do it and and that's all right i see no one else coming forth any testimony in opposition so this guy gets up Yes, he's sir. a neighbor of this property, and he's against it. He's against this. Uh, my name is Gerald McKinnon. I live in uh, on Monterey Road, which is adjacent. Pretty good guy. He, he, what, he, what I wrote down was he's, he doesn't see the big plan, but he's pointing out some, some things. So listen to what he says, because he's basically saying what the city's doing wrong. And what he's saying is paralleling what I'm telling you they're doing, which is they're waiting to the last minute 
to, and, and they're doing things that are confusing to some to the average person, but I see the big picture and I see what they're doing. I'm gonna I'm gonna announce in just a minute here. To this property, I, I built a house there in 2008 and I've lived there ever since. I've lived in the city since 2006. I also own a vacant parcel along the block, also abutting this property. <clears throat> I'm opposing it because it's a mistake. It's a planning mistake. And it's not a small mistake, it's a big mistake. What he's opposing is they want to convert this from residential area to commercial area. They want to, they want to give them the ability to, to have a commercial property. And we'll hear a little bit more about him before I tell you what it's really about. It's a mistake that has citywide implications because you would be creating he's right. a new commercial zone in the far southeast corner of the city. And that will have impact all over the city. That will impact us. This guy's really informed. He puts out some really amazing statistics. Basically, what he also points out is that the commercial property in Desert Hot Springs, if they pass this, the amount of acres of commercial property is going to double just by just this one item. And they passed it, by the way. But, but listen to the points he points out. They don't care because they're following a script and they're getting done what a higher group wants them to get done. In turn, that will impact every other commercial zone. My objection really is that this is a change from residential visitor serving to visitor serving village. Visitor serving village sounds very, very nice. Sounds very nice, exactly. They See, that, that's what they're doing. These are the, another subtlety. We caught another one here. They don't want, it's commercial, but they just make the wording sound like it's, it's really soft and gentle. Oh, it's visitor serving village. Oh, visitor serving village. And he, this guy's really sharp. He knows, he knows. My objection really is that this is a change from residential visitor serving to visitor serving village. Visitor serving village sounds very nice, but it's not nice. It's a commercial zone. There are things you can do in visitor serving village you cannot do in residential visitor serving. You could, you could open a swap meet there, and you could do that the day after this ordinance passes, because you will not have control once it's been rezoned. They will have the right to do all of those things that I listed in my letters, such as even a bus station, for instance. These are by right. Uh, it's also a fairly major shift in the balance of the city. There are 190 acres of commercial property in the city of Desert Hot Springs, and this would add 108, taking it to 298. I, I'm mistaken. It, 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 took, it, it increased it by 100%. So it was about 200 acres. Now they're adding another 108 acres, so it's, it's now almost 300. So it, it increased it by, another third, by a third. <clears throat> the current ratio of commercial to residential is 10%. The new ratio would be 16% nearly 17 actually. So when I heard council member Betts talk about where are we going to put these low, low income residences? Okay, here's where he goes, he goes wrong uh, because he talks about, but <coughs> he's, he's got some good points. I won't make you listen to all of it. You can go back and, and play it. I'll put a link to this YouTube video uh, by the city under this video at the end. Here's what it's all about, really about. And I've got a link from a news site that says the same thing. And I might have even mentioned this in another, another um, video. Cities start to question an American ideal, a house with a yard on every lot. Okay? Single-family zoning is practically gospel. Now, this is the New York Times. Okay? The paper of record. Single-family zoning is practically gospel in America, embraced by homeowners and local governments to protect neighborhoods of tidy houses from denser development nearby. But a number of officials across the country are starting to make seemingly her heretical moves. The Oregon legislature this month will consider a law that would end zoning exclusively for single-family homes in most of the state. Where have we heard single-family homes being unsustainable? Oh, it's the same place that they talk about you can't eat meat in the future. And what are you seeing? You're seeing, what's the brand new, what's the new restaurant that just announced they're going vegan? They're going to have cauliflower bread and all this stuff? They're, they want you to eat, start eating bugs. Okay, the bugs are coming. So the, 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 they're saying the cows are farting too much, causing too much methane, the planet's dying because of cow farts. It's just a stupid reason to get you to be considering eating bugs. Single family homes, air conditioning, appliances, dams, Tilling the soil, private vehicles, all going away. And 
What they're doing in our city, and this, this is, I'm finally going to say it. They're gobbling up residential zoned area. They're flipping it. Whatever they can get rid of of residential low density, which is 10, what is it, 100 feet by 100 feet? That was 10,000, you know, 10,000, not 8,000, 9,000 square feet lots with his backyard, front yard, driveway, garage, house. They want to rezone the whole city eventually to make it so that you can still build those, but they're also allowed to build multifamily on them. Okay, so this is a gobbling agenda item by agenda item by agenda item by agenda item, a gobbling up of residential low density land in this city and flipping it to medium density or high density. And what will they say to you if you want to build a single family residential low density home on the property? It's going to cost you a lot of money. Why? Because you're not using the land to its best potential. And that's what this article is saying. Now this article right here from the New York Times is from, where, when is this from? June 18th, 2019, from this year. So it's all rolling out at the same time. Notice it's a movement. It's, they're ready to go with it. So the, a reckoning with single family zoning is necessary, they say. This is Oregon. The Democratic presidential candidates Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, and Julian Castro have taken up the cause too. Oh, how surprising, you know? They're puppets too. A reckoning with single-family zoning is necessary, they say, amid mounting crises over housing affordability, racial inequality. Oh, it's racial inequality. It's, it, they got to make low density because of racial inequality. And climate change, of course, that has always been happening. So they're going to blame something that always, it's like saying, we have to rezone the area because the sun comes up in the morning. The sun is coming up. It's the reason why we have to take your car. So climate change has always happened, but they're, they're preying upon people who know zero to vote. Okay, yeah, it sounds like a good deal. Will I get something out of it? Sure, we'll give you a nice big check every month. Today, the effect of single-family zoning is far-reaching. It is illegal on 75% of the residential land in America, in many American cities, to build anything other than a detached single-family home. That figure is even higher in many suburbs. Oh, those dirty suburbs. And newer sunbelt cities. According to an, al an analysis, the upshot conducted by Urban Footprint Software that maps and measures the impact of development and policy changes on cities. If this moment feels like a radical shift, said Sonia Hurd, a professor at the University of Georgia's College of the Environment and Design, it was also a radical shift a century ago when Americans began to imagine single-family zoning as possible. See, we're in a winding down of the American life. We're going to be going, you know, burgeoning out into, oh, I can own my own home, I can have my own garage, my own two cars, wife my car, wife my... To... No, no, cars are going to be bad and you're going to walk, and you're going to live in an apartment, and it's going to be tight, and you're not going to have air conditioning, and you're not going to have an appliance, and uh, everything's going to cost you about 10 times what it does now. That's where it's going. So we're closing off the country. They're, they're shutting down. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like they're... That's the new American dream. That's it to live in a tiny little box apartment stacked up high. I'm on the 31st floor. Have you seen those those videos of Hong Kong people, who, not Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, where they live in uh, these, these? they take like a, a room and they'll put cages. They have stacked cages. Cages because when you go for the day, you gotta lock your, your stuff up. And it's a bed, a little shelf, and that's it. That's all you, you live in a, and the fans are going, and it's hot, and people are sweating. They're sitting there in their underpants, old men, 90 years old. That's where we're going. That's where your city council is taking us, step by step. It won't be, it won't be here for a long time, but they're laying the groundwork to go there. Okay? They're getting rid of single-family, low-density residential areas. They're getting rid of them. So this one here took up a huge area. This is great. They got that one done. Now they're going to they're gonna slowly move. They're going to gobble it up, and they're going to convert it. So that's really what this man... 
doesn't know from what from his words be prepared for 40 acres of low density residential disappearing be prepared for 40 40 acres of residential low density disappearing he just said it be ready for 40 acres of residential low density disappearing and what did another article say i'm sorry this is too much fun because it's like saying Hey, did you guys notice this is black? And they're like, that's not black. And I'm like, it's black. And they're like, that's not black. And I'm like, it's black. There's another one. LA Times. I think this article I might have even pointed out to you. California could bring radical change to single-family home neighborhoods. Oh, it could? They're basically dictating this. And you're going to see at the end of this meeting, I hope you stick with me here, because it's it's it goes on for a few more pages. But at the very end of the meeting... I mean, it was, it was ridiculous, the joke they made. We are, we are slaves to California. Cal the Newsom, Newsom is the next puppet in line. He's more aggressive than Jerry Brown was. And he's really moving hard and fast now. So LA Times says, California could bring radical change to single-family homes. They say it's not done yet, but they're thinking about it. No, they're doing it. Reporting from Sacramento, if you live in a single-family home in California, it's likely everyone else in your neighborhood does too. That could change under a state measure that would require California cities, us, and counties to permit duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes on much of the residential land now zoned for only single family homes. You see that? And they'll say, but you can still build a single family home. We're not saying you can't. But then you go down to the, the permitting department and the, and the planning department and they say, yeah, about that single-family home. We put extra costs on because it's a dirty single-family home. And people go, really? What are the costs? They say, well, we got to hit you with a $50,000 fee. And they'll say, well, what does that go to? Well, it goes to the biodiversity programs because you're taking a 9,000-square-foot lot and you're only putting one house on it. We'd like it a lot better. We'll give you a lot bigger breaks if you can put a fourplex on there. And they're like, no, I don't, I don't want to live with three other families. I want to live, you know, I, 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 I see my dream as a single family home. They're like, okay, well, get your checkbook out because that $50,000 charge was only the beginning. <laughs> so you end up, they end up making it so that when you want to build that single family home, they, it's like, a, it's like when you buy a, a drill and then you've got to buy a place of battery. It's like 90% of the cost of a drill and battery. So you know, build a single family home that's only going to be worth $500,000. It's going to cost you $700,000 to build it. You know, but if you want to build a fourplex on there, on that property, it's only going to cost you about $250,000 with all the federal funds you'll get. Because they'll back you up. They'll give you all kinds of free money if you want to do it that way. So they basically say, uh, put your head in the wood chipper or go live a dream life. It's your choice. You know? But you can still build that single family home and put your head in the wood chipper if you want. We're not saying you can't. So here it is, LA Times telling you that could change. California cities are, would require California cities and counties to permit duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes on much of the residential land now zoned for only single family houses. So what did we start with? Are you starting to see what this means? They, they're cornering the city. They're cornering everything, causing that ring to appear. And then when you go to move, they're waiting. They're pre-positioning things in place that later on, when you go to actually apply your money to something, your process to it, they're ready and waiting by saying, no, you're not. Because one thing you can't see connected to what happens later, because it doesn't happen until months to years later. This is what your city is doing to your city. They are doing it. And when I was talking earlier about the deep state, it's all, it's the city. Those are really your problem. Your problem are really the staff. Because this is the staff's recommendation. So the staff is on the phone. What do we do? What do we have to pass? Or what do we have to get them to, to, to pass? Okay, we got to get... The, oh, okay. So we're getting rid of residential. All right, well, that's... You know, I can do that. Um, so then they recommend to the city council, we recommend you adopt this resolution. We recommend you 
And the city council goes up there and there you're yada da yada da yada da yada 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 for your uh, for the public. They know what the staff wants, and it's their job to sell it to you in a way where they pretend like, now now is this is th they're gonna are they gonna be open for business next week if we pass this? So we're passing an amendment to, ch and they go, no, it's to change the zoning. That's for later. If they do all the permits, they can open a business later. You know, they talk to the, to uh, Councilwoman Pike that way. She, I, are, are they, are they going to have the swimming pool heated tomorrow? No, this is way before that. And you'll see it. I'll show you. So, that poor guy. For 60 acres. They passed it anyway. A visitor serving residential disappearing and becoming commercial. And in the city's code. So, 40% residential low density disappear, 60% visitor serving, uh, uh, residential visitor serving. You cannot disappear. build residential property. You cannot build residences on commercial property. It's right there. So, the decision you have. This guy was pretty informed. He's. Pretty sure do we stuff. make a major change in the balance of the city's residential commercial? Or do we do it in the southeast corner where there is virtually nothing else? So he, he went on to say he thinks that Two Bunch Palms is going to come, you know, they might come back late, right after this and say, well, we want to do that too. So they didn't listen to him. They passed it anyway. And uh, 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 let's see. 10706. Let's go to 10706. Oh, crashed. Jeff Kalatsky. Thank you very much. Okay, 107.06, we're back up and running They didn't notice this planning commission process. I, I sh so here he complained that the planning commission, you know, he, 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 he was pretty upset because he must have gone to the planning commission phase of this before they uh, handed it off to the city council as a recommendation that they approve this. So listen to what he says about the planning commission. It's, just, it's like a broken record. It's the same thing now. They, there's, they don't understand it. They didn't ask any questions. They just passed it. I mean, it went fast. I mean, it's like, and the reason for that is because they're told ahead of time, you need to vote yes on this. Now, I don't care what, you, what you've got to do. If there's a big room full of people, just like do a little song and dance, uh, figure out how, how to get it passed, but you've got to get it passed. They're, they preset what they're going to vote on. So this is the planning commission. So listen to what he says. Should mention it's in the letter, but maybe I'll draw attention to it here. The whole planning commission process was very, very flawed. They didn't notice this properly. They didn't take time. To so they didn't send out notices to the neighbors nearby this. They didn't take the time to consider it. No one discussed it. They simply voted it through. <laughs> okay, next item we have to uh, vote on approving the and sending off to the city council the. Zoning map amendment, general plan amendment, public speaker. Yeah, he spoke, whatever. Okay, everybody ready for a vote? Yeah, we approve it. And it, it shouldn't be done this way. There's no environmental impact analysis on the table because the planning department says, well, we're not planning to build anything. But that's not what the law requires. The law requires you to consider the environmental impact of even a zone change. And this is a general plan amendment. This is big. This is a big mistake. So he's done. So uh, how do you dispute that? I mean, you know, it's like they're just they're just doing what they want. They're running rough shot. They're just, you know, well, we're not doing that. You know, it's two, it, it, we're two sets of rules. Rules for you, rules for us. we got to follow the same rules, but we're not following them. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> After he said all that. Environmental impact. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this is a general plan amendment. This is big. This is a big mistake. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you very much. Yeah. He knows how he's voting. So that's the arrogance of, of it. Um, moving along here, 111.24. These are, there's, I, I don't normally do this for the council meetings, but this one was just packed, jam-packed with all kinds of interesting stuff. 
So hopefully I got them on the run or something. Maybe they, they'll, they'll give me some, some good stuff next time, just like this one was. We're not in the develop. This is when... This is the same item. Now it's called zoning map amendment. It's the first three of zoning map amendment and general plan amendment. And here's where, at, at some point after watching so many of them do this in this meeting, bottom line, this is what they're doing. They know how they're going to vote. They know they're going to vote yes, but they have to look like they have to look like they have some concern over something, and they all have to they all get a little little time to pretend to be that. Now listen what she says. And for staff, um, I need for you to explain exactly what we're doing. Um, we're not in the development stage. Um, that's correct. You're um, basically what's on the agenda today is to approve one a resolution. The resolution would change the general. This woman's been in the council for a long time, cumulatively, and she, she she's basically asking by saying we're not in develop, right? I mean, at some point you have to see that this is just to fill some sort of like, oh she. She, she's not sure. She's really kind of on the fence, and she wants to... So, I mean, they might as well just sit up there and go, blah, 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 Okay. I got the answer I needed. Thank you. General plan map. So it would change the general plan map so that the general plan designation of this site is proposed to be visitor serving village. The second item... And the, 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 the hardest thing to watch is that these people would just like to just sit back in the office and just approve this stuff without having to come out and see us. And that's what you're seeing. Is that it, 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 They don't like having to do... They, this, is, this is purely, what do they call this? Ceremonial. This is just ceremony. Okay? This isn't them actually working because the work was already done over the phones, over what... I'm emailing you what you got to vote or I'm sending you... It's baby talk basically it's just to just to say we did the process of, of a city council meeting and voting it's the zoning map amendment and it is it's the zoning map amendment proposed to be changed as well to the visitor serving village so there is no proposed development that you're reviewing but you are reviewing the change in general plan and the change in zone so when we um when it comes through for uh, development. See? That's a little hidden one. That's a little hidden one right there. When it comes through for development. General plan and Pretty confident the they're going to pass it. Now, if this was all wide open, like, I don't know how I'm going to vote. i got to think about this. Do I really want to do I really want to pass this? It they, it would naturally be if I pass this or if, if if I vote yes and this passes when it goes to the it it would then go to the development phase. Now during that phase, no, it's it's when it goes to the development phase. We see what they do with that. They know what they're doing. So when we um when so it ca she caught herself. She caught herself. When we pass this so she, uh, when we, uh, when, it's just, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. This is, this is so obvious. I mean, this is, and they, they might as well say, put up a sign in front of their state saying, we hate doing this, but we have to, by law, is come up here in front of you. So when we, um, when it comes through for uh, development, Mm -hmm. has to go through the planning commission. It does have to come here. There's a process. It does have to come here. Not not um, if it passes. The process is that it would come through the city. Uh, I know that. Would it? But we're not there. Oh. I, I mean, she, she's questioning whether it's in the planning phase. Somebody said she's the one who reads everything over, like word for word. When it comes through for uh, development, it has to go through the planning commission. It does have to come here. There's a process, but we're not there, correct? <laughs> 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 
She's asking if it's in the planning phase. She's asking to confirm that this isn't in the planning phase, right? I mean, I don't know if she's trying to say to the public, she's basically saying, don't worry. They're not, the bulldozers are not there yet. Plowing the land. Don't worry, people. This, this is still early in the phase. So in other words, she says, we're not in the, asking the, the community development director, we're not in the planning phase of this, right? I mean, I don't know what to say. Um, not all uses would come to the city council. Um, some uses, especially when it's going from vacant to a use, would go through the planning commission process. So it depends if there's new buildings or exactly what they're doing, but um, basically the process would go to planning commission um, for the most part, less likely that it would come up all the way to city council. Any other questions? Mr. Betts? Okay, so... So do I have anything for him on this? 11240? Yeah, right here. We're approving a zone change. Again, the cat is let out of the bag. Bam, 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 bam. Check this out, folks. We're approving a zone change. Did you hear what he said? Or any other questions? Mr. Betts? Okay, so we're approving a zone change. A zoning amendment to the general plan, and we're allowed to do that. He tells you we're approving. He's not saying if this passes, we're approving a zone change. He's saying we're approving. That happens when people slip up because their mind knows the outcome and they can't help it but say things and they slip out, all right? It's like, it's like if, I, if, if I was trying to not say my wife, I would sometimes stumble and say my wife because I have a wife. I've had a wife for 20 years. I would stumble and say my wife, uh, uh, my, my girlfriend, you know, or whatever. It, it, it's, it's hard to hold back what they know they're going to do when they are trying to... You get what I'm saying? Do you, do you understand how they're letting the cat out of the bag? And, and you should be upset at this because this is, this, is, this is what your mayor built in the last election. He built this across the board. This no wall, this you donate to one, you've donated to all of them. This is what you've got. You've got a, a one-person city council. So... It's all show. It's all show. This is all, this is all performance at this point. They know what they're going to do. And there's even more examples coming up. It's not over yet. Four times a year, correct? That's correct. How many times have we done it this year? Twice. Okay. okay. Um, so we're within that. It's not like uh, before old days where we're doing it 200 times. BSV. Okay, so then um, I wanted to say on, on here, the 114 mark. R, V, S, L, R, L. And this is what I've already said to you. They are eating up residential low density to take over into commercial or high density or, or medium density. They're gobbling up residential low density for medium density. This city is going to be packed with apartments in the next 10 years. They're going to, they're just, it's all going to be apartment buildings. It's, it's, if you let them keep doing this, they're going to transform your city into another can of spam. This is not your city anymore if you allow them to keep, these non-thinkers, to keep doing this to your city. It's so upsetting to see them getting away with this stuff. And again, if they came right out and said, we're, yeah, we're doing that. We're going to, we're going to convert it all. Uh, it's your job to stop us. That'd be different, but they're pretending that they're not. There's a motion by Mirabel Tempai. I have seconded it. So there you go, passes. And Gardner had a conflict of interest because he collected money. He didn't vote. Motion passes unanimously. This action includes an ordinance um, for the zoning map amendment portion. It's an ordinance of. So then we'll go to 120, where.
Did you want to go ahead and state your resolution? Yeah. Okay, on uh, the item nine, Rancho Del Oro landscaping, I have homes inside the uh, development, so. That's announced he has homes inside the Rancho Del Oro development. That would mean that I would be voting on something which I have a direct financial interest, so I will be recusing. Uh, Madam City Attorney, do I leave the room on this one? Okay, so he leaves the room. Um, one one twenty five oh oh. Let's go on with that. One twenty five oh oh. Okay. So here's a resident of Rancho del Oro because what they're covering is the annexation of the the landscaping and the lighting for Rancho del Oro into the city's control and city's responsibility, and they're going to tax them for it. And these two people here, close with the mayor said that they're okay with it, they, but they're afraid that if people aren't informed on what it's going to be about, that they'll vote no on it, and they'll be back. So they want their neighborhood to look better. I, I understand. I'm, I can support them on that. It's fine. But what she, what she admits is uh, what you keep hearing over and over, which is that, I'll let her say it. I'm Karen Miller, Paul Miller. We live in Rancho Del Oro. I'm speaking you to, to you tonight regarding the landscape management issue of Rancho Del Oro. The resident committee of Rancho Del Oro has been blindsided by the lack of communication from the city. What a surprise. What a surprise. City stonewalling, city not communicating, city just, just, they work for you. And, and, you know, she says more. We were notified regarding the meeting held on 11-6 and just learned that the city RDO proposal is on tonight's agenda. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. The best way to get the thing to go through is to not tell anybody about it until the last minute, right? So is that incompetence? Is that them sitting back there going, oh, God, we're so behind. You know, I'm barely keeping up with today. We got a meeting in three days. Oh, shoot, we got to put together this stuff. What's going to happen? Oh, we got this stuff going. We'll put it on there and let the people find out about it when we post it online 72 hours before the meeting. I mean, is that what's going on? Or are they specifically keeping us in the dark on stuff that they want to just squeak through when nobody knows about it? You know, hide it until the last minute. Tell them when you legally have to tell them, which is what they talked about. In this anyway, they want to hold back and send out the ballots in the last possible day so that, you know, there's a better advantage for them. I mean, this is all like sleight of hand. This is all, this is all like skullduggery. I mean, they're just, they're just like, like serpents, like, uh, like sneaking around and jumping up out of the rocks at you. And, and I don't know what else to say. It's, it, she says it. She, and they keep, they all keep saying, oh, they didn't think about it. They didn't, you know, it's, we're blindsided. This left us very little opportunity to reach out to the voters in the RDO community to pass along information that would help in getting the proposal passed. If the council acts on this item tonight and the ballots are mailed tomorrow, we can expect the naysayers to prevail in the election. So what they end up doing? They end up deciding to mail the ballots out at the last possible minute so that they can get the best chance for it to pass. And watch, I'll show you. They all say, we want this to pass, and when this passes. <sighs> 148 Let's. we're gonna jump ahead a lot here. Because this one went on for a long, long time. And they had a lot of fun with it, because they were all friends, and they, all, they were all, all the people in the room were in agreement that they needed to do it, but they were discussing how to, how to fool the people who are going to be against it into voting for it. 520, you're going to get what you're going to get for that amount. They're saying we don't want this to fail. 148.35. So, government. That we can do. And mail it to those peop people. Yes, we could do that. Okay. Um, another thing with, that we can do is tonight you're um, approving the preliminary engineer's report. Do you hear her? Tonight, you're approving the pre preliminary engineering report. Now, this is, this is a representative of Webb Engineering. I think it's Allen Webb. It's, a, it's an engineering firm uh, that obviously the city contracts with for, for their engineering, for how, the, how the, this landscape management is going to happen and the whatever. 
She let the cat out of the bag again. Now these people, these pe these are people who have conversations. She has conversations with city staff, planning, whatever, about what needs to get done. And they, I can assure you, yeah, we'll get them to we'll get them to pass it. Yeah, it won't be any problem. I mean, it, it, this is this is a slam dunk. Yeah. So, again, they know what's going to happen, so they can't. Mm, it slips out. So government terms and mail it. Your uh. Cool. Yes, we could do that. Okay. Um, another thing with, that we Listen. can do is tonight you're um, approving the preliminary engineer's report. What did I miss? Tonight you're approving the preliminary engineering report. What's to mistake about that? She knows that it's going to pass. And she's in her conversation, she, she lets her guard down. And it slips out. Remember, this whole episode is about all the marginal, slippery stuff that is really the most important stuff to watch. It's I'm, I'm saying, don't look at that hand. Look down here. Look at what this one's doing, where it's working. And, and you know, you can get caught up in the, the process and miss the little subtleties, but the subtleties tell you a ton more than the core stuff does. We can... Re Let's one more time. look to those people. Yes, we could do that. Okay. Um, another thing with, that we can do is tonight you're um, approving the preliminary engineer's report. We can reevaluate um, the cost. It was so obvious these people knew the outcome because she was sitting with another representative of web engineering, right? Her assistant or partner right next to her. That woman sat there. I sat in the same aisle. She sat there during most of this talk about this annexation on Facebook, just flipping through, looking at post after post after post for like 45 minutes, just casually listening to the conversation. Now, she wasn't worried that they were going to pass it or they weren't going to pass it. She's just sitting there, just listening and looking on Facebook while this this was being discussed. Like, oh, shoot, what about the dates? We got the dates here. Oh, they know the outcome before they go to the meeting, okay? Hello, McFly. Hello. Hello. Estimate. As long as we're not increasing it, we can lower it. Okay. Um, and then you would approve that rate at the public. I'm landscaping, so I thank you. 15013, 15030, we got to go to. Our two residents out there, you made a very compelling case, and I, I, I wanted to just kind of walk through something. I know we all want this to, to pass. We all want this to pass. What's we all? We all, we all, I mean, that's why I'm here so late tonight to show you this because I, three, last three pages, promise. What am I missing? <laughs> I, I wanted to just kind of walk through something. I know we all want this to, to pass. These are great sound bites, by the way. I, I wanted to just kind of walk through something. I know we all want this to, to pass. And I, I wanted to just kind of walk through something. I know we all want this to, to pass. And I know you guys and, and the bulk of your residents up there do as we all want this to, to pass. And I know you guys and, and the bulk of your residents up there do as well. I want this to, to pass. And I know you guys and, and the bulk of your residents up there do as well. I want this to, to pass, and I know you guys and, and the did bulk get of that? the residents I think you did. as well. It, These are phonies, man. These are phonies. These are not people following the process. These are po people that are, that are rigging the system. They are taking advantage of every opportunity to keep you in the dark, and they're doing whatever they want. Okay? This is not, this is not how it's supposed to work. Okay? They're way too comfortable. You need to get involved. You need to get involved. You need to do something next year. You need to change things. These, this is, this is getting really, really ridiculous. One fifty-two forty-five. We all want this to pass. Gens right. all the hood, make uh, are the main of them. Thank you so much. And I think it's just pervasive. I think it's everywhere. I think that this is that's what I was saying about. I don't know if, if Councilman Betts is like in in so much of this all the time that that's just. They just become like warped, like, yeah, of course we pre-rig it and pre-rig the vote. Of course we figure out what it's gonna, vote's going to be before we go in. 
Uh, do you know that that's not supposed to be the way it is? What do you mean? That's what we do. We decide way beforehand. And someone tells us, what are we supposed to do? Why do we do that? What do you mean? you actually supposed to think about it? That's not what you do today. That's not what Palm Springs is doing. It's not what Ranch and Mirage does. Come on, RJ, get with the times. This is what we do. This is New America. We're quitting on the subcommittee. <laughs> We're here to serve uh, Mr. Griffith. We're here to serve. That's what I'm upset about. We're here to serve. Who are you serving? You? No. The top? Yeah. Oh, I can't say that. I gotta say I'm here to serve you. 152.45. Uh, I, have, I do have a question. <clears throat> okay, fake question meant to like, oh, he's got to look. Uh, hold up, hold up. I got to look like I'm concerned about something here. So I'm going to say... Because uh, I noticed in there there's a, a $10,000 one-time setup fee. That's Can his new you move. explain what that is? That's our fee for doing... One-time $10,000 fee. So here's our elected official. You know, who's going who's gonna to come up with a, like, a little pretend question? You know, because really, again, they don't want to have to come out here and do this. They just they want to just sit up there and go, uh, or just phone in a vote. Hey, how do you vote? Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks. But they got a ceremonial come up here and do this stuff. So he's asking this whole questions. process. Okay. So um, we have to charge it to the property owners, um, even though that. It's like go in, go into it somewhere, find something that's kind of oh, ten thousand dollars. That looks like a good question thing to ask about. It says in here there's a ten thousand dollar fee. What's that mean? Setting the max rate uh, when the city does their budgeting for the following year, that ten thousand dollars will not be included. Correct. They Correct. have the um, ability to go up to the max, but if they don't need that amount, they they don't need to. So in effect, that three thirty one would probably drop to two ninety two in the second year. Possibly, if there's no increase in rates or anything like and, that. And, but the increase is limited to 2%, correct? Correct. And that 2% would be based on that 292, not that initial 331? It's, it's actually the, it would be the 331. Mm. So you're so, setting but, the but, max, you're setting the max, right. it increases by 2%. However, the city doesn't have to levy at the maximum rate. Okay. Uh, so right now, so the max would go up, but not necessarily the what's assessment. being levied, correct? Okay. Okay. Yep. So you know, he's pre seems to be a pretty smart guy, pretty sharp, smart guy. He sold his soul, though. He sold his soul to to to. He's in slave. He's a slave. He's a slave to this whole charade that happens every two weeks up there. They're just doing whatever they want, and they're pretending like it's all organic, like we're, you know, whatever. I've said that enough. So 224.50. We got to jump way ahead. So we got we got one or two big big things to 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 cover tonight, and then we're almost done. Past Mr. Miller's bedtime, please take him. So that that was finally that one that annexation. They went into break, a ten minute break. And, and there's me right there. I'm going to do a 10 minute break. 224.50. There I am, I should say. Proposed or? Flexibility. Is that opposed? Oh, come on. Taking a testimony in neutral position? And clarifying notes. Of the ordinance will return on six as an ordinance amending Desert House Trains Municipal Code Chapter 12.04 regarding camping and restriction. Okay, here, th this this is the last, the second to last, last one will be coming up pretty soon. So we're almost done. This is about decriminalizing camping on public property. I mean, it, it, you can read it, it it's uh, she reads it here, but I got an article that tells you where this is really going. This is one of the best ones in whole tonight's show. It's going to show you about the dolphin circling. This, this is really what I had to find, the dolphin circling and the fish flying, the video for that. This is the one I found it about. 
but they do that they do the same process in a lot of ways they set something in place and then years later it comes back to benefit them on the next thing they were they have to do years later but this one is a really clear shot right right here watch Mrs. Archuleta. Miss Archuleta. That was okay. tough, man. I was going to give you all kinds of titles. So listen to what she says. <laughs> In April 2019, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal published an amended opinion in the case of Martin versus the city of Boise. The case established new restrictions regarding regulations against sitting, lying, and sleeping in public places. Okay, so she reads a lot of it, so I'm going to go right to an article that talks about it. Because this, this sums up where this is all going. This is, this is really clever what they're doing here. And I'm going to show you, they, you know, your city council may not even know. They're just told you got to get rid of the criminalization because a lot of cities are doing it. So there's an article from MyNorthwest.com. Will Ninth Circuit Court decision allowing sleeping on streets backfire? Because that's what I researched. I researched homeless camping backfire. And I, September 6, 2018. Okay, so this thing this has been talked about for a while. So the Ninth Circuit Court ruling said that you can't really criminalize people who are homeless. So this is a, a, a bridge version of what she was going to go into in long detail and talk about. Ninth Circuit Court re recently decided that cities can't prosecute people for sleeping on the streets if they have nowhere else to go. Very key, what they just said right there, if they have nowhere else to go citing cruel and unusual punishment. It's a ruling that could have, could have ripple effects on how cities manage shelters and public spaces. Now, the Ninth Circuit Court ruling was a predecessor to what your city council just approved last night. Okay, so things have to be put into place so that the next thing can follow. What is the ultimate intended outcome? It's going to say it right in this article right here. This one doesn't know that they let the cat out of the bag, but they did, and, and that's why all I have to do is see what they're talking, what the item is, and Google it with certain key search terms, and you will see where they're going to go with it. And let me read it to you. It is a ruling that could have ripple effects on how cities manage shelters and public spaces. That's where it's going. This opens the door for all cities across the United States and primarily here on the West Coast, where we are, where we coddle the homeless, okay, said KIRO Radio's John Curley. They, have, they will have no additional force to keep the parks clean, to keep the streets clear, and they won't be able to do anything about it. The case was originally brought in 2009 when six homeless people from Boise, which your code enforcement did the back history on this situation, sued the city over a local ordinance that bans sleeping in public areas. Now, all they have to do is get somebody who's not homeless to be part of the group to inspire them to sue the city, and they, it's a pre-range, pre-rig situation. Why? Because the outcome is coming, which is what they really wanted all along. Like a, kind of like a false flag. In reaching this decision, the decision, it was and it's not to benefit the homeless, I guarantee you that. It was believed that Boise was criminalizing the very act of being homeless, which the court found unconstitutional. The Ninth Circuit Court cuts the legs out from underneath the police and the city to uphold public civil rules, Curley said. The sign says no sleeping in the park after dusk. Well, now we're not allowed to enforce that law against the homeless people sleeping there. So do you see where this new ruling, decriminalizing the homeless sleeping in public places? They just passed it last night. They decriminalized sleeping in public places. Now, it's not against the law anymore. I mean, it's not a criminal offense against the law. So they left a lot of little stuff in there that says, well, it's still illegal, but you don't have to get permits anymore to camp on public spaces, things like that. This is what it's all about right here. By decriminalizing the homeless with the ring of mud, homeless go into the shelters. This gives them the foundation to push for building the shelters, gives them the foundation to put the homeless in the low-income housing. You see how it's all coordinated and timed by higher groups, big-time executive groups, big-time federal, county, state, it's all 
That's what they do. This is, this is the deep state kind of thing. This is what they do. This is what they program. This is what they plan. This is what they suit cities to do. Okay, so the mayor, the city council, they're, they're setting the trap. And then when the homeless start sleeping on the streets, what do we have to do? Got to put them in low-income housing. Or we got to put them in shelters. Okay? And that's the contracts. That's the big corporate. Because the corporations need work. And they need continuous work. That's why wars are for profit. That's why wars are created, manufactured, to sell bombs. This is where this is the housing. This is we need builders contracts. This is the solar industry. We'll, we'll pass regulations that makes it so that you know the federal government will subsidize and we'll get we'll, we'll sell more solar businesses. So it's basically the ta the tail wagging the dog. So they they act like the tail is wagging on its own, but the tail is back here wagging the dog. It's all reversed. It's all upside down world and backwards. So. They want the business of creating all the, the housing, and then which needs all the services, which needs bigger government, which needs more schools, which needs more libraries, which needs more, more police department force, which needs more fire. It's an ever-increasing, growing government based off of creating a crisis. So they create the crisis of homeless now being decriminalized, which means what's the incentive to not sleep criminally on the side of the street? And then when people say, oh, do something, they say, why don't we put them in the low-income housing? They'll say, that's a genius idea. How'd you think of that? <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> Cities may respond by creating additional shelter beds. While Boise city attorneys are considering the next move, cities like Boise may respond to the decision by creating additional shelter beds and widening the standards for accepting the homeless. See, grow it. Take the homeless problem, grow it. Water it. Grow it. Make money off of it. Stay in power over it. it it's, it's so apparent. Maybe if every city builds all these beds, oh, maybe if every city builds all these beds, city builds beds, the fact that there is a bed won't matter. For Curly, the decision fa fails to focus on the root cause of homeless and enables behavior instead of solving it. Here's the difference, Tom. You don't have to change your behavior. You can continue to drink. You can continue to do drugs. And you can continue to prostitute yourself, Curly said. Until you break the chains of addiction, the person will continue the cycle, this life, until they eventually die at an early age. But that came at the end of them slipping out what the plan is anyway. Don't you remember at the very beginning of the year I was talking about on my show here? When they were talking about the Desert Sun was talking about we need to build all this home, all this homeless shelters. And that, was a, that was like eight months ago, six, eight months ago. I even went to a homeless committee meeting at, at the CVAG, and I saw, what's her name there, the, the Desert Sun reporter, the homeless girl. The girl has some sort of like speech list or something like that. Okay. A corporation forecasts 12 months, 24 months in the future. That's all this is. They forecast what's going to be developing as far as new news. Oh, it's that's why you you, you know you watch like uh, news reports and they're all saying the same thing. Um, it's not just you. You're it's getting hot out there. You, you know, a guy in in uh, another city. Not just you. It's getting hot out there. And then the girl in another city. It's not just you. It's getting hot out there. It's a it's a top down controlled system. And we're there's no individuality in the future. They're they're removing the individualism of every different little city and making it all a, just a pod of the same Borg system. So if they're allowed to plan the future in this way, they'll just sell it as it comes up. They'll pretend that they, but again, it's so easy because the script is public online. No air conditioning, no single family homes, no private vehicles, no appliances in the future, no meat eating, no dams, no tillage. They want to get rid of dams, okay? What's it gonna to do to your electric bill again? Jacks everything up, create the crisis, the bill goes up, they say, well, oh, we need to, you know, put more people on welfare as, you know, it's just, it's just the, the de-Americanizing of everything. Why? For control. To control the masses. That's all this is about. Remove their ability to do different things, and you got them under control. Remove a wild horse's ability to jump out of the ring, and you got them under control. And then you keep cornering them. Cornering them tighter and tighter into the corner, and they will eventually submit. You can put the harness over the head. You can then walk them. 
That's how it's done. So this is a very slow winding down, putting us deeper into a corner. It's very strategic, it's very warlike. And this is what's happening to you. We got time, I'm trying to inspire you to see that this is a standardized plan. And it's happening in so many cities all across the nation. It's all the same thing. That's why when it comes, an item comes up, I just Google the keywords, and there it is. It's already there happening, and it's telling you where what it's about. So we're almost done. So she she went into the whole Boise thing. They it passed it. The Eighth Amendment prohibits the imposition of criminal penalties for sitting, sleeping, or lying outside on public property for homeless individuals. But what they did was they said they were going to restructure how they can they can like uh, confiscate the property now. So. It's kind of like a, um, they, they pull something from you, which is they want to frame it so that the, the mud ring so that later on they can sell, you know, more um, or uh, more of reasoning behind the agenda of the homeless and the housing. But they give back a little something. So they, what they said was this is going to, if they pass this, this will permit them to figure out how to uh, inventory junk that they bring in from the homeless. You know, I did a, a live homeless video a couple weeks ago or whatever over by... Um, by uh, Mission Springs Soccer Park, and there was a bunch of junk out there. So there, there, there seems to be what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, well, well we're going to clean up some of the stuff, and we're going to have a better system to inventory it, and if they come back for it, we can give it back to them or we can release it to them. So that was all part of this, too. It was something like a little give back, but the take is bigger. By the way, this, this woman, uh, she looks really sweet, but she does not look happy to be here in this, in this position. So... Well, my computer figures out what we're going to do. We're, we're almost almost done. Hang in there. Those ...who cannot obtain shelter. Prior to the decision, the city enacted an ordinance creating regulations for camping. The ordinance, Chapter 12.04... 226.15. ...ash and dumping. Ms. Pye? Alert! Fake question from Councilwoman Pye coming. Fake question. Fake question. Baby talk. Um... It if it's private proper, property, do they have to have any type of signage? You know, sign as, thank you, that they do not want uh, camping? We do. Private property is private property. That means the owner can do what they want. They can ask people to leave their private property. Who doesn't know that? So she, because there's a mention of private property in here, again, this is such a simple, simple question that this, this is, <clears throat> this is like, um, you know, did, did any of the council members ask anything of the people who, of the person who spoke? Yeah, Jan Pye had a question. Okay, good. That's, that looks good. That looks pretty good. What was the question about? Uh, it was pretty sophisticated. It's about private property signage. Do they have to have any type of signage? You know, sign as. Thank you. That they do not want. Uh, listen, camping. listen to her answer. Private property? Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean it, that would go to like a no trespassing type of situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what does a private property owner do about campers? And she's like, it's not really our job. That's private property. They would like put up a no private trespassing sign or tell them to go or something. So fake question to look like she's concerned, baby talk. I would assume. Yeah. Okay, okay my next question I'm going to give to the city manager. It says physical impact is none. She said fiscal impact is none. Okay, now this is, this is a small one, but city manager has no idea. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Christina, but I think the fiscal impact saying none was because we were changing the ordinance, not specifically what it would take for us to spend the money and time to, because we have no idea exactly what that would be. And so he has no idea what it's going to cost the city to to uh, to do all this when if it passes. Uh, he's ha he's halfway there. I'm halfway there. But it's kind of funny. He says we have no idea. Just saying none was because we were changing the ordinance, not specifically what it would take for us to spend the money and time to, because we have no idea exactly what that would be. And Okay, so moving on. One last page. Okay, 235.07. We're going to go 235.07.
And this is this is the one where he admits. We'll close public hearing at this time. Lanes are narrowing on Paul. I see nobody in the queue. I'll entertain a motion. I move we adopt the ordinance. Second. What a surprise! A second on the table. Any more discussion? I move we adopt it. When we vote yes on this. <laughs> It's a nail biter. Oh. This is the first reading of the ordinance of the city council. I'm surprised. Cohen Rooster, third for So we're gonna go to two thirty-five dash fourteen. Cues. I thought originally I wouldn't have to on this stuff. Executive committee approved ten million dollars. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In 2017, the Coachella Valley Association of Governments Executive Committee approved ten million dollars in regional funding for projects that directly address bicycle and pedestrian accident and fatalities in the Coachella Valley. Oh yeah, it's about keeping you safe. Uh, the city of. Pla it's not about a, a a western agenda, a whole across the western part of the world, of putting in walkable communities. No, it's about it's about saving lives. Yeah. I uh, for that funding. And the Palm Drive Signals and Streetlight Project was awarded up to two million two hundred and seventy-four thousand uh, dollars, and they included uh, the installation of twenty-four new streetlights, traffic signal synchronization, uh, the completion of traffic signal warrants at five intersections, and the installation of those traffic signals. In an effort to address immediate safety concerns and complete the project in a timely manner, the project was separated into three phases. The first phase was the construction of the traffic signal at Palm Drive and Camino Ventura. That's done. That project was completed in August of 2019. The second phase was the traffic signal at Palm Drive and Desert View. That's happening now. And the traffic signal at Pearson and Choya. That's coming. That construction started in October of 2019. And the third phase, which is a project we're discussing tonight, is the Palm Drive Streetlight Project, which goes from Palm Drive to Two Bunch Palms uh, Trail, from, along Palm Drive from Two Bunch Palms Trail to Pearson Boulevard. The Palm Drive Streetlight... This is, this is a guy who's... He's got a lot of stuff in his head that he doesn't share with anybody. You can tell. Watch his face, his body language. He's a... In the safety improvement project, includes the construction of 24 new streetlights, the associated electrical system, the installation of additional conduit for future fiber connection and traffic signal, sy signal synchronization, a combination of floor reconstruction and road surface rehab of asphalt, and new striping, including... Road surface rehab. <laughs> I love it. It's like a... Uh... Vill village um, road surface rehab you know road drinking too much it's a road on drugs road surface rehab road surfaces combination of floor reconstruction and road surface rehab of asphalt and new striping ink that's all they do they fill the gaps slather a slurry on paint the lines let's know how much it is including narrow, narrow driver lanes and new bike lanes with green markings and Narrower driving lanes. And new striping, including narrow, narrow driver lanes and and road surface rehab. So they're going to make you closer to the car next to you, which is going to slow you down. So now you're going to... Mm, that's the whole idea. They, this is all they want to do. They just want to go, slow everything down, confine you, make it less efficient. You know, it's, so uh, narrower lanes. Narrower lanes, I mean... It's like when you're on a narrow bridge, you just, yeah. So now they're going to put narrower lanes on Palm. Why? Because you've got to make room for a nice bike lane. Because there's so many people that, you know, I hate to see them going up Palm and having so much trouble because there's so, no, no room. Wait, i got a stunt coming up uh, pretty soon here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, it's going to be, I think it's going to be funny. But this is what they're doing. They're narrowing the lanes. Sign signal synchronization. A combination of floor reconstruction. Signal synchronization is again for the autonomous cars. And road surface rehab of asphalt and new striping, including narrow, narrow driver lanes and new bike lanes with green markings. And uh -huh. It's everywhere now. The green bike lanes, all Rancher Marge. Bob Hope's got it now. And there's never a single bike on the lanes. This is all about 10, 15, 20 years in advance having the bike lanes in the road so that 10, 15, 20 years later you go, of course it's okay to ride bikes. I've been looking at bike lanes on the side of the road for decades. I'm totally ready for it. This is, this is and it dumps a bunch of money, and it, it basically, people will follow. I mean, that's the saddest thing is, is to realize how sheep-like a human being is. If it's unaware of it being, being manipulated, that's what I broke out of. Boom! I'm like, whoa, I was being manipulated. Once you break free from it, you see everybody else being manipulated. Right away, you're like, wait a minute. 
But no, and you can't break them out of you. Like you're you're going into the pit, and they're like, I no, I'm not crazy. Crosswalks. On October 16, 2019, the request for bid proposals for construction of the project was released. So then he talks about who gets the who gets the deal. It's millions here, millions there, couple million here, 4.1 million there. It's grant money here, grant money there. I mean, they're they're just flinging money. Money's flying out, and half it's probably grant money. And they're last night they approved 106 thousand dollars in more grant money to come in. I mean, it's there. The city is totally on welfare. The city is totally on welfare, and the federal government. That's why uh, under Trump, the spending is like 13 percent more than it was under Obama at this point. I mean, the federal government, the deep state, is going totally berserk. They're just like, we got to get everything done in like two years now. And they're just flooding with money, getting so much. They're just as fast as they possibly can. It's, it's not Trump. It's, it's, it's all these agendas that have been building, and, and now time is running short. So, I mean, I mean, there's so many millions of dollars that are just going into striping roads, putting in uh, LED lights that, you know, are not about your safety. I promise you, it's not about your safety. Do you notice anybody busy? It's about spying on you. It was posted on the city website, in, a, in the local newspaper, and with... So, one last thing we got to do. The very end here, it's the last thing I'll show you. Yeah, they talked about, uh, they're basically spending hundreds of thousands, four hundred thousand dollars on new tractors and new trucks and stuff, because, why? Because California said, these will be illegal in 2020. Okay, so the state is the boss. And the city... Totally cool with it, saying, let's do it. Let's spend $400,000 on the city's trucks that are diesel that won't be allowed in 2020. Now, half these sit in the yard. I mean, one of them even admitted the water truck. He's like, we hardly ever use it. So they did get a tank trailer on order for that. But most of the stuff is just, it just sits. They have it in case they need it, and it just doesn't get used. I mean, look at the condition of that. That tractor, that's one they have. It's a 95 John Deere. But the state says, and why does the state do this? That's the tail wagging the dog. Because the businesses, Caterpillar wants to sell units. Caterpillar wants to sell units. So Caterpillar lobbies to get the states to pass new regulations that makes their old equipment obsolete. So the city has to burn $400,000 to buy all new cats. Do you understand? Do you see the rigged game? Do you see how it works? This money does not go to help people. This money gets burned up. It, it goes to the corporations. That corporation then puts money back into campaigns. They get reelected. And, and the city throws out a few bones here and there, puts it on a couple parades. And the people vote them back in. Do you see the circle? It just happens over and over. This has been going on for decades. But at this point... I've, I've studied it so deeply and seen it so firsthand now that I can point it out to you and it's right there in front of you. 1995, it's a John Deere, it's a 544 uh, carbs off-road regulation. Non-compliant with California Air Resource Board off-road regulations. This is our, our skip, skip loader. With the skip gun. loader. And what do you know? There's the old water truck. That's going away. There's the old dump truck. That's going away. There's a bucket truck. That's going away. So There's cat, a, now they want to get a 2019 cat, compliant. tier four final stage compliant. Oh yeah. Oh, believe me, that's the last stage that California will want it to be. Oh yeah, sure. And it comes with the. They won't want two, it any better uh, than machine. that. Well, they not until cat says we got some units we got to move, and they lobby the state to say we need them a little cleaner. So they say you'll be in. And where do these tractors go? They admitted it. Where are these tractors going to go? They're going to go out of the country. Because they're federal, they won't be allowed to be sold in other states. So this is this is a way of of shipping, making us pay for because they'll buy them pennies on the dollar in, in uh, third world countries. So all of our tractors will be okay. Okay, they'll be okay in foreign countries. They won't be okay in California, as if we have different air here. Okay, so the air here we have won't be good, but they can use them down in Mexico in Tijuana. I mean, that's okay. I mean. It's, it's so rigged at this point, and you have people sitting there on the dais that know it's rigged, don't care, love rigging it, love being part of the rigging. 36 month, uh, 2000 replacement, 415. That one's going to be our, our premium warranty. $400,000 so is going to uh, get a trailer uh, instead of a tank. That will never get used. Who's going to tow around a trailer with a 25 foot hose on it? 
they need the truck to drive through the air and spray out the back. That's how they're supposed to we work. We evaluated how often we use that truck. We don't use it that often. So we are trading a pump. With we don't use it that often, but we still need another new thing. Which is a, with a one and a half inch. We have the dump truck. It's Ooh, a 2019 Ford. Ford the, yeah. Uh, so Ford and Caterpillar get in the business here. Client. We have our bucket truck. Uh, uh, it has our ticket. It's a tier four. It's to comply with the regulations. And hey, who, want, who doesn't want new equipment, baby? City uh, just got new, brand new Ford trucks to drive around and mow the lawns. I've been throwing in good money after that. So <clears throat> I got off track here. The last one I really want to do is I want to show you where 305. Then I promise I will wrap up and we'll be done. But there were so many little goodies in this in this meeting. Uh, thank you, City Council. Thank you. You you gave me lots of little Easter eggs. Item. So we're going to focus on what the was that. What if the cannabis hinder? So they're almost done. They're it they're six the minutes until the end of the meeting. And I understand. And I've got something place, five minutes before it's over. Well, we're almost there. Other people wanted to take a different course from you know, a different view. I don't just nothing influence of money out of politics to make and contribute okay so here they basically admit you should make it smoother what I will agree to disagree on that mr. Griffin listen to that listen to this and listen to what councilman Betts says at the very end and then we're gonna be wrapping up yeah I just want to say I, uh, I know you guys did a lot of work on this I appreciate that as now what they're talking about is that was the the last item? Oh, it was the uh, it was it was to change the buildings construction uniform codes. No. Okay. Oh, it was number twelve recommendations for policy rules and regulations city council. Subcommittee. There's a big link. I'll put that at the bottom of this. It's about the, the state. Again, the state of California said, you know, we're changing the rules on campaign donations. You know, you can get a maximum of 3,000 uh, and you have to recuse. So basically, the Fair Political Practices uh, Commission is now going to be in charge of enforcing whether the, the uh, candidate or the, or, um, or the uh, elected uh, public servant is breaking the rules, basically accepting money from one group and voting on something to their interest or against their interest. So there were some changes. The state said, these are the new rules, and the city last night adopted what the state said. So listen to what he said about it. As far as the, uh, the campaign contributions, I think matching to the state is a good idea. Oh yeah, state's now running us, and er almost everything. Uh, maybe we have a choice now. What I see every time we're up here is we are amending parts of our code or our ordinances because the state has passed something new which was the camping issue mm -hmm. uh, just see state says you got to change it because of camping state says you got to change your campaign fund we do it last last council meeting i believe was the micro, uh, micro kitchens, kitchens or mm -hmm. micro enterprise kitchens so every time state says they do 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 it time we're here there's another state change that we have for prize kitchens so every time we're here there's another state change that we have to change all of our stuff to go ahead and comply more fake outrage okay saying i don't know it's bothersome but we're gonna do it anyway i with the state so if this is what the state the option with the state is i would prefer we just go ahead and do that and not have to come back here and then go through this process again. Well, then why have a city? Why have the city meet like this? Just wait till they say what Sacramento says to do and just do that. If he's just going to do what everything, everything the state says to do anyway, why even call us a city? Why not call us California out here? California. City of California. State within the state of California. To match the state, so not have to come back here and then go through this process again to match the state so just quickly don't take the listen this is this is the the gemstone on the cap of it all oh 
I just wait till you hear what what Councilman Bet says. It's the wrong way. I match the stage, so don't take this the wrong quickly. way. Don't take this the wrong way. I, I appreciate your comments. I, I got the same gripe about the state too, and I know that's the, the spirit in which you meant it. But we need to tell the state to knock this stuff off. Just as an editorial here, I mean, we're perfectly capable of running our city. And they sure seem to be changing things and messing it up. Sonny, I'm sorry, I just had to get that in. We gotta tell the state to knock this stuff off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Governor Newsom, you better knock it off. There, I'm done. Talk about for show. I mean, I gotta hear it one more time, then we're done. Right about the state, too, and I know that's. I just did it. That's the spirit which you meant it, but. We need to tell the state to knock this stuff off. Knock just it as an editorial here. Knock it I off, mean, state. We're perfectly capable of running our city. But you don't do it. You listen to the state. And they sure seem to be changing things and messing it up. So and you'll change along with them as they change. Honey, I'm sorry, I just had to get that in. Yeah, okay. Anyway, you've just watched two hours, 45 minutes of the show. Uh, Independent News, Desert Hot Springs, the build up. Call in line was there. You know the number. Thank you for watching. We're wrapping up. Um, till next time. Oh, tomorrow night, I got a, I got a, a guest host of a show right here tomorrow night. So I'm announcing right now that it's going to be a show tomorrow night and tomorrow evening. I'll set the time. We'll figure out a time. I'll post it. But we're going we're gonna to have a nice uh, separate host. I'm looking to build this organization, this media thing here. So, you know, uh, we're going to have some fun. So until next time, Desert Hot Springs. Love you guys. You take care of each other. Be nice. Be good, and we'll see you out there.